precision only the best will do. Merkel Racing Engines is proud to be the official race engine sponsor of New York State Fire Department drill teams. For over 40 years, Merkel Racing Engines has delivered reliable power to B and C trucks on the track. With a combined 250 years of in-house racing and engine experience, put your trust in Merkel to power your drill team to success. For more info, visit MerkelRacing.com. Merkel Racing Engines, where power and performance meet reliability. BigBucksMania.com. Get ready for the Middle Island Fire Department's Big Bucks Mania Party and Raffle on Sunday, June 1st, 2025. Over $32,000 in prizes and 22 chances to win, including a top prize of $15,000. Tickets are only $100, and your entry includes a delicious barbecue, door prizes, and live music featuring Sweet Ride, all starting at 1 p.m. Don't miss out on the fun, the food, and the fortune. Most important, you do not need to be present to win, so the Middle Island Fire Department invites fans from across the country to buy in using their convenient and secure online purchasing system. Head to BigBucksMania.com to pick your ticket number and to get in on the action. Adept Technology Consulting is proud to be joining the Drill Team family as the exclusive IT professionals for New York State Fire Department Drill Teams. Adept delivers computer and technology support to fire departments, EMS agencies, businesses, villages, and libraries throughout the tri-state area. In addition to computer support and knowledge, Adept also provides IP telephone and camera solutions, as well as a variety of technology assistance packages, all with 24-hour support. No IT problem is too little or too large for Adept. For more information or to speak to an IT professional, call 631-676-1756 or head to adept-techconsulting.com. Decker Dan's Designs is proud to present high quality items engraved to represent your team or department. Specializing in tumblers, keychains, hats, team logo, trailer hitch covers, plaques, leather patches, and more, all with endless possibilities. To check out their products or to speak with someone from the team, reach out on social media to Decker Dan's Designs or email at DeckerDan'sDesigns at gmail today. Bill Fox Company has been in business for over 70 years, specializing in custom championship rings, watches, badges, pins, and awards. The Bill Fox Company has crafted championship rings for past state champions, including the Westerners, Flying Dutchman, Hobos, Wolves, Yellow Hornets, Pistonockers, as well as the Firefighter Combat Challenge. Bill Fox Company is the recognized name in recognizing people. Check them out on Facebook, Twitter, and on the web at www.billfoxco.com. Proliner Rescue has been serving the fire, EMS, and police industry for over 25 years as the exclusive Long Island dealers for KME, Wheeled Coach, Road Rescue, and Demers. Proliner's factory certified sales and service technicians ensure customers are ready to respond at any moment. The full service body shop can handle all of your paint, collision, and fabrication needs. In addition, Proliner's electrical technicians build the most extensive and high quality conversion vehicles available. Don't forget, they also love a great B or C truck restoration. Check them out at ProlinerRescue.com and let Proliner help build your next vehicle. The Titan Group is the trusted name in apparel customization industry as a one-stop shop for all your drill team and department needs. As always, we offer all our in-house services, screen printing, embroidery, sublimation, and graphic design. Take advantage of our custom online ordering system. Simply choose your products, choose your logos, and have your members pay online. All your orders are separated upon delivery. Browse our vendor catalogs at www.titangroupapparel.com and follow us on Instagram at Titan Group Racing. Call us at 631-859-00. Or see Artie Seskine or Devin Robinson on a track. All eight, all day, gear up, get on the Titan Group. 
IBS is the official SCBA dealer for New York State Fire Department drill teams. Beyond the track, MES is proud to provide premium support throughout the purchase and maintenance of your 3M Scott SCBA. With a combined 5,600 years of first responder experience and 8,000 certified training hours nationwide, Municipal Emergency Services delivers unmatched service and product knowledge. Check them out at www.mesfire.com for details and information. The instantaneous on-scene electronic personnel accountability system used by FDNY, New Rochelle, East Chester, and many other fire departments nationwide is now available from Systems Definitions Incorporated or your local Motorola dealer. SDI is a well-known software application developer for FDNY and is the company behind this game-changing patent and technology. SDI has paired with New York fire departments including Central Islip to solve the challenge of accounting for members who respond after the tones go off. And new this year, SDI has integrated SCBA data from your Scott SCBA systems. This new capability will further improve fire ground safety by providing pass alarm and air remaining directly to the command post in an easy to view format. Track your members and organize your fire ground activities with a proven solution designed with the New York State Volunteer Department in mind. For more information, visit systemsdefinition.com. As the longest running sponsor of the New York State Fire Department Drill Team's live broadcast, High Tech Fire and Safety is fired up for another summer of heart pounding action on the track. Since 1989, High Tech is the exclusive home of Morning Pride Bunker Gear, the gold standard in firefighter protection. High Tech is your source for the full product lines from Genesis, Mercedes, Elkhart, Toxic Suppression, and more. High Tech is your one-stop shop for a full range of helmets, hoods, boots, and gloves. To check out a product in your firehouse or to speak with one of their friendly team members, reach out at 631-777-5170 or visit HighTechFireNY.com. H2M Architects and Engineers is a full service consulting and design firm with a dedicated team that has over 200 years of combined experience serving the emergency services industry. No one understands the needs of first responders better than fellow service members, and H2M is proud to count several of their own staff among them. Whether it's a rehabilitation project or new construction, each design considers the responders' workflow, enabling safer operations and faster response times when it matters most. H2M is proud of their long history of client service and consistent ability to meet architectural, engineering, and environmental challenges head-on while offering a practical approach with creative results. Remember, quality response deserves quality design. For more information, please visit www.h2m.com. Fire Rescue Systems has been in the fire industry for over 20 years and is proud to show their support for New York State Fire Department drill teams. Serving the NY area with a complete software solution for emergency service entities, FRS software is efficient and easy to use, making it ideal for emergency situations. With a wide array of fine-tuned and tested modules, FRS provides a modular-based system to fit every department's needs regardless of size. For more information, please visit www.firerescuesystems.com or call 631-234-1304. Attention firefighters, want to see the latest in thermal imaging? Contact your local MES sales representative to arrange a live demonstration of the Seek Attack Pro, now NFPA certified. The Attack Pro's mixed gain mode allows firefighters to see detail in the hottest and coolest regions of the scene at the same time without freezing and switching modes. Mixed gain simplifies and improves thermal imaging for the fire service. For a limited time, MES is offering an exclusive promotion. Every purchase of an Attack Pro comes with a complimentary apparatus charger. Head to www.mesfire.com for details and information. Integrated Wireless Technologies is proud to be the exclusive Motorola dealer for New York State Fire Department drill teams. 
IWT offers the full line of Motorola products to fire departments as well as David Clark headsets and sound off signal emergency lights. IWT is your one-stop shop for custom engineered radio solutions, licensing assistance, dispatch solutions, and top-notch reliable service with fully insured technicians. Start off your next radio upgrade with IWT. Check out their website at www.goiwt.com. Looking for something exciting and educational for the whole family? The Nassau County Firefighters Museum in Garden City has something for everyone. Kids can play on the fire trucks, dress up in gear, and spend an interactive day learning fire safety. For all of you New York State Fire Department drill team enthusiasts out there, come visit the Great Neck Alerts Vega C Truck and the Hewlett Smoky Stovers B Truck on display at the museum alongside classic films from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. An educational and interactive experience for all, open seven days a week for July and August. Visit them today. For more information, check out ncfiremuseum.org. Long Island Firefighters Legislative Committee was formed by Suffolk and Nassau firefighters to fight for what matters to you. This organization acts as a conduit to our New York State and federal lawmakers to ensure that firefighters across the island are protected and treated with respect. In past years, the Long Island Firefighters Legislative Committee has helped to usher in the Ambulance Recovery Bill into law, which will deliver a much-needed new stream of revenue to fire departments big and small. For more info on the Long Island Firefighters Legislative Committee and how you can help, contact Bill Thies at 631-466-6069, Long Island Firefighters Legislative Committee. Since 1973, Fire News has been a proud supporter of the time-honored tradition of New York State drill team racing. As they approach 50 years covering the fire service throughout New York and beyond, Fire News is honored to continue as the official publication and online coverage of the New York State drill teams. Look for ongoing coverage in Fire News on firenews.com and on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All right, hey, welcome everybody to the host. <laughs> Jumping right in. <laughs> Sorry, I thought we had some music coming there, but hey, nah. no music, but here we are live from uh, Fan of Big East tonight for the 2024 wrap up show. Haven't done one of these before since so we have first time out trying to. Is your first time doing one of these, really? Well, a wrap up show. We've never done the wrap up show. Oh, a wrap up show. And yeah. I think you meant a, a party from Fatties. No, a party from Fatties, of course. Great bar out here. East Islip, we're uh, celebrating the uh, end of the season, plus uh, we're sponsoring this thing for the Suffolk County drill officials. Come on down here to Phantom If you can hear my voice here in Suffolk County, you should be here right now sponsoring these guys and uh, give their summer away to help us out uh, on the track. Keep us running. I have uh, with me right now Chris Chris Murphy, our producer, and uh, I guess he counts as a state champion this year. He's part of that team. And yeah. He, uh, and, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's yeah. a ring for that? Yeah, from Central oh, Island. Yeah. Uh, and Artie, I don't feel great about it. Artie Susskind, brother of Paul. <laughs> Paul can't make it tonight. He's uh, he's uh, down at the Harry Potter convention. Yes, exactly. You just saw his outfit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so welcome. Here we are today. Artie, what would you think? A good season? I thought it was a great season. Um, let's <laughs> So you were out on the track? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twice. All right, wait, wait, wait. Hey, hang on. So, this is we call relief pitcher. But like, yeah, yeah, let's clarify a few things here. Yeah. So Artie, Artie's a very busy guy, and he didn't do a lot with us this summer because he's got a lot going on. But so he's always the best at one of these, so we flew him in for this. But oh, he's like, hey, listen, I don't know if I'm exactly ready to talk nonstop. So what does Billy do oh, immediately? Right hey, Artie, talk for two minutes. Tell us what you saw this year. <laughs> Go ahead. I saw a lot of trophies at the state drill. He did. He was our trophy uh, expert, which was great. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Not so you won a lot of trophies, huh? So, yeah, you want to get one? <laughs> go in the back room? Uh, yeah, so I thought the state drill, obviously, we're going to go there, was awesome. Um, great day, 100%. I thought, uh, you know, obviously, it was extremely competitive. CI pulls away at the end uh, of the day, but... You can't complain about how many teams scored, the competitiveness, all that kind of stuff. Oh, not no. one bit. And, uh, you know, it, 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 throughout the season, I mean, it, it started right right from the very get-go. From that Linda Hurst tournament, the, op the opening day of the season, the uh, Central Islip Hobos come out. They throw a 30 spot on the board to start the season at Lindenhurst. 
And uh, 32, to be exact. 32 there. They, 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 they topped 30 points 30, three, three times this yeah, season. And just think of 30, 32 at uh, Lindenhurst this year. They were 20 out of 20 yeah, after 20 the first four. Like a lot of chatter going on that day. Like, are they going to break some records here, total points in a drill, so to speak? We've never had a 25 for 25. So they were 20 for 20, and then they, they, they missed in COs. And then they finished up the day with three uh, second places in a row. So yeah. that's how they get to well, 32. Miss, yeah, missing b -host. I mean, think about that. Four first place, three second place, 32 points that day. That, and, with, and, one, and one fluke. <laughs> right. What, what, a, what a day for a Central Iceland day. And, and West Sable stuck around that day as well. It was pretty good to see. And uh, they had a great season. I thought going to the state tournament, they had as good a shot as anybody to win that tournament. They, uh, they really came in flying high. A couple nice wins in a row going to the state tournament. They won the CI invite. After after CI came out swinging in holes, uh, ladders that day. So, but yeah. Let's see. Let's get back to where we were going before. So, well, I mean, do, were you going to go to Lindenhurst? Like uh, start there? Or, or do you yeah. want to just start go to well, the state tournament? We would just start there just to talk about how CI starts a year. Then, uh, you know, the, the first three, four tournaments of the year get split up between the big four. I think all four won one of the first three drill, uh, four drills, right? I mean, it was uh, CI, North Lindy, West, West Sable, Sable. And then uh, Isla pulls out the Joe Hunter on a, on a clutch bucket run for the last shot of the day uh, to, to win that tournament. Yes. And that was, you know, I mean, I there was even talk like Isla was running. They, well, obviously, they were running with some guys in spots that weren't, oh, you yeah. know, the, in, in key positions and stuff like that with some replacements. Obviously, you talk about Josh was, you know, running nozzle at that point. So they had new guys in new positions. They were missing some guys, and they come out that day. And I don't think anyone expected them that day. No, no Pyatt either. And Pyatt, Pyatt was an eight-event guy for those guys. He right. all the spots. And there they go out and, and win that drill, beat uh, West Hempstead. Correct? Yeah, and it was uh, – and they, they, you know, it all comes down to the end. They need, they need to beat a 22-8. They run a 22-7 to win the day uh, at the Joe. I mean, uh, just, just – I'll tell you, a really good start to the season – you got to see the best of all those teams. And, uh, well, it was funny because they were just yeah, they back to back. And then, uh, you know, they, they slipped back, uh, you know, three tournaments in a row. And right. Then, but, you know, just as you're saying, as CI wins the first one, the second drill the following week, North Belmore, West Sable wins. Um, and then West Sable wins again. They go back to back. That's when then we saw it at uh, Isla Point at the Drill Hunter. North Lindy didn't get, you know, North Lindy got a win there at the Central Isla Invitation. Yeah, that was, so, yes, we'll talk about that a little bit. That, that was a crazy. Right, which is, again, you know, it's kind of almost like the prelude to the state drill. This year with the state drill being at Central Islip, everybody's there. Teams are coming down from upstate to be at that drill. They go that day and win it with, what, how was their, what was their point total that day? 23 points to win the CI with just a two-point win over Central Islip. Yeah, 23 points. Every CI starts that day with 15 out of 15 to start the day. And North Lindenhurst keeps plugging along, you know. They come out of ladders with seven points, and then they, they turn it on in the hoses and win it, bucket, uh, win it in, a in motor, motor pump. A motor pump going away. Yeah, and again, they scored in seven out of the first eight races that day. So you know that's an old Harry Penny thing. You know he was always you know scoring, you know third place in eight events, twenty four points, going to win a drill. They have twenty three points. They scored in seven. Really, who, who saw that come? The CI starts their own tournament with fifteen points out of you know three three events, and then. Loses. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm pretty sure the fan duel had him at about a 96% lock on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I put some money down. I lost that day. Oh. Okay. So overall, I mean, re really great season for Central Ice Slip. I got to tell you, they uh, had a good thing. But West Sable had a, had a nice season as well, I thought. They won, they won a couple of tournaments there Just and uh, looked really yeah, the, good. First, into the state tournament. first win at the uh, Lin uh, Selden Invitational with 27 points. And they, I mean, you look at, again, in CI that day, 24 points coming in second place. So a lot of, you see in team scoring, that we've just looked at two straight drill, uh, two st straight drills, second place team scoring over 20 points. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's like it's, so you, you're you going in the drill saying, if I'm going to win this thing, i got to get the 25 or more, which is you really can't have a hiccup in a contest. I mean, West Sable that day had one. They scored in seven out of eight drills where we just looked as North Linear scored seven out of eight at the CI Invitational. Now we go to the, the Selden drill. Selden, where West Sable wins, their only hiccup of the day is an overtime and motor pump. That day, they are 18 out of the first 20 and 25 points, I mean, 27 points total. There you go. Interesting uh, Interesting there now. So to start the season, let's let's bring in another player. Miller Place, they come out in, in Lindenhurst, end up on the track that day. They run, a, they run a heavy seven to start the season at the Lindenhurst track. Thought that was a great shot. 
And then they finish up uh, in the top four in uh, at the Selden Drill. So they, they have a nice start to the season. And I tell you, like, like Paul mentioned it, I think we were about, uh, what, three, four drills in, uh, Chris? And uh, we talked about Selden maybe, maybe peaking early. I mean, uh, Miller plays peaking early. And I, I said, you can't peak too early. You, you got to go out there and run and win. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they peak too early. No, I think, not at all. I think it's just part of taking the next step in racing, and I think Chris exactly. can attribute to that. I agree. It's I'm trying to run harder. I think. You know, there are sometimes. Listen, though, obviously, to me, I look at Miller Place. They're hungry. They're trying to get to that next step, right? So they're out early. They're practicing. They're going after it. And now, you know, they see some nice success the first week of the year, right? Nine yep. points. They run the seven. They run that twenty-two forty-six, even though it, it only got them two points that day. That's still a number. Like, where'd that come from? Right. How did you just, okay, we got to worry about them in that race too? Right. And no one really saw that so, twenty-two forty-six, and That was a precursor for later things for Miller Place in the season. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think with Miller Place, they, they would be the first ones to tell you that they were frustrated by what I would divide as the second half of the season, right? Oh, yes. But uh, when you take the steps that they took this year, and the the only piece that's missing is the consistency, right? Yeah, and you know, and they're suddenly starting. There's this old uh, thing that uh, what, what what is it? Uh, tens cost hundreds, and hundreds cost thousands, right? They're getting close to hundreds, right? Right, where you know they get that five forties in B ladder every week, and it's like, man, you just you shave that tenth. All right. of a sudden, it's a big run. Well, you know? I've always said like when you, I mean all the years, whether it was racing or, you know, sitting up top watching, if you can run a 540, you can run a 525. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just, how do we get there? Well, and, and one of the things that, that you, you, you get this more than anybody, one of the things that's interesting, I think, about the sport is we do feel this rebirth kind of happening here, right? I know when I went through and I started looking at the numbers that didn't score at the state drill this year, I was like, oh, wow, there's some big ladder numbers specifically. What's interesting to me, though, is that kind of begets the push into the next level, right? I think back to late 90s, early 2000s, there was literally 10 climbers who could win the win B ladder, let's just say, every week. Um, it used to be for the last few years, it was five or six. Right. Now we're getting close to where there's 10 again, and those teams that feel like they're just out of the mix, what do they got to do? You move so that drop up a little bit, right? You got to right. push it. Now that reduces consistency, but those numbers will come out when you have enough of those teams. We still give out five points, right? You know what I'm saying? So, like, you go, if you want to get a big piece of those five points, you just got to take a chance. And, and so now I think that's the next step of uh, the next phase of the sport is we're going to start seeing people starting to push it in those contests, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that's how you're going to get it to the next step. And, it, and it's almost like, to me, you don't want to – if you're the 540 team, and we'll use Miller Place as the example, right? Yeah, Miller Place 547, best shot of the year. You don't want to try to well, run a 520. Have. You just let it happen. Yeah, you can't. You, I always. Well, the one way you can push it is the drop. Right, you can push. It, everybody's been still, running some drops that are right consistent but, drops. But you still. But again, that's where you say the inconsistency comes in. So you got to kind of. It's it's like there's steps to get there, and you just let it happen. Right. Because it's yeah, you do it in practice. That's yeah. one thing. Doing yeah, it on a Saturday is a totally <laughs> different thing. And then when you do it that one time on a Saturday, it's like, well, okay. Yes. All right. We can do that next week. That's, right. That, that was, you know, yeah, the spikers are like, that was cake. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Hold that thought. So let me get a couple shout outs here for our ch uh, chat. And if you're watching at home, uh, jump in the chat. We're going to read the chat all day and all uh, for the next couple hours while we're here at the uh, at the fundraiser for um, the Suffolk County Drill Officials and uh, Billy Cornell's Fun time shenanigans party hosted by Billy Cornell. It's weird that your name's in the title twice. <laughs> uh, but hey, Don Sherman's watching. Bonnie Ryan's watching. Mandy, thanks. I got uh, the, the buzz, I think, fixed a little bit. Uh, Jen Mason's watching from Florida. Joe Rizzo coming in from North Carolina. We hope you guys are doing okay with everything going on. And we've got, by the way, we have friends and family from all over the country. And a lot of our friends and family are dealing with some stuff. So let's take a minute on while we're there. Um, Nick Modesty and Chris Murphy smells. Thank you, Nick. Anyway, um, uh, Patch Affairs had a hard time down in uh, Tampa the, uh, the last uh, two weeks. So uh, sending out a couple of prayers to him. I know he's uh, they've been struggling to try to get the house back together. They lost a lot. So Largo Lou on the west side as well, um, yeah, dealing that, with a lot of stuff. So that, we were thinking of all of our friends down there on the that, west. Go that area is near and dear to me. I mean, that's I, I travel that area a lot, and, and I, I've – Paid attention a lot of what's going down there. So I hope everyone's doing well. How about a shout out to Lindenhurst Fire Department, what they've been doing the last few days. Yeah. Uh, that's, what the, that's the best of what, of what we do, right? Yeah. yeah. Bobby Santos uh, putting together a whole thing over there in Lindenhurst. 
where they're going to be sending trailers of essentials down to the North Carolina area and that Asheville, uh, Boone area and stuff yeah. that got hit really hard with those, the rivers cresting and everything like that. So shout out to those guys. Uh, awesome job. Yeah, just take, take a look on the, uh, on the website. There's a, there's a date so you can drop off there. It's uh, so today, I think the 10th and the 11th that they, they is the next no, it's, no, it's it was today and it's tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. So, uh, I it was next week too. 10 to 3, it might be, and they may be there, but 10 to 3, I know tomorrow. So if anyone's local and around, you want to drop some of the essentials off, uh, you can over, you know, head over to Linder's Firehouse. Uh, I think it's, it's at the track, at the by the pavilion. Yep, dropping off there ten to three tomorrow. There you go. And what's impressive to me about that is, is it reminds me so much of nine eleven, where the trailers were coming in the other direction, right? You know, we're, we're all of us are a little older. We remember what that was and how it felt to get that support from all around the country. Um, for the rest of our lives as New Yorkers, we'll do everything we can to try to get those trailers going out in the other direction. So, 9-11, or even we had Sandy up here. A lot of people sent stuff over. Without a doubt, yeah. For Sandy. That's the best of what we do as, as Americans. So, yep. um, hey, let's hit the reset button. Let's start with our little format we talked about here so we can get some video playing. Um, we go. Is right. that okay with you, uh, Artie? You want to you yeah, so, start us out? So, we're going to go – we're going to just, you know – Go back to the state drill. Yes. We're going to start more of like who qualified for the Joe Hunter. Yes. And we're going to start at like <clears throat> the bottom teams as far as, you know, the lower scoring point totals and work our way up. There'll be some video that will go up about these teams. And you guys can kind of recap their season. Not, you know, besides the state drill that they had, recap their season as well. So our first one that day, one point on the board, Spencer Port Red Onions. Red so Red Onions. Spencer Port obviously came into this drill, I think, expecting to do more than one point. There's no doubt about that, right? Yes. Um, their best races, they, they could easily, I think, put up a 6-5. Not easily, but they could get a nice 6-5 up there. Sure. Um, something happened in three-man ladder in, in August where South Hempstead decided that they were a first-place three-man team, yeah. and that changed the equation of, oh, we'll get into Southampton some more. We will, but but so I think that for to go back to that point before where there was a lot of teams that were maybe happy to lay down their their three point shot. Three point shot just became a one point shot when when South Hempstead showed up. Well, Twab was always telling us for the last couple of years uh, how well they do in practice over there in Weir Street. He uh, he's been helping those guys for a long time. You know the Mar brothers over there and uh, you know uh, Pellegrin up front. Yeah, but, they, uh, but don't don't let's let's go no, back no, to Spencer Port here for a second. Well, Twan always threw it out there for you. Well, you know, you can see we're, we're zooming oh, in on Spencer, Spencer Port, Port right, right now. now, and uh, and and I think this project in Spencer Port was always a multi-year thing, right? When they took Josh over from Henrietta and they brought in a bunch of these young guys, this was this was this wasn't just a reboot. This was a complete rebuild. Well, right. not at and all. Uh, and and. I wouldn't have been surprised if Spencer Port was able to jump right into the top five conversation right away, but growing pains are a part of this sport. I'm not shocked, right? And I think we talked about shaving those tents. This team is scary because they are so close on so many contests. Yeah, because you saw it in there throughout the season. It seems like every drill they went to, they ran one or two events really well. I agree. I agree. So, and it was not the same event typically from the week before. Yes. When you look yeah, at the yeah, 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 right. I so agree. you're like, oh, they can run that? Yeah. And then the next week you'd be like, oh, they can run that? Yeah, and they did the same. When they came down to the island, they, they kind of mixed and matched a little bit in the CI invite as well. Um, I think it was a 660, the CI invite, a nice 5.3. 5.37 and B-Ladder. 5.37 37 B-Ladder. We're watching that shot right here right now. That was, that was a nice shot. There. So I come in right now on your uh, screen. Look at that. This is 12.72. That got them a couple points at the uh, CI invite against all the right. good boys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, you see, they, they ran an 8 and C-Ladder. But, you know, they ran the 6.55. They ran the 12. So 8, 10, and B eight, eight, 10 I mean, and b hose. So that's where I'm saying, like, they're running shots that yes. grab your attention. Yes. Hey, Paul Meyerberg checking in. Chris Schultz checking in. Hi, guys. From Texas and Illinois. Uh, glad to have you. We're recapping the 2024 state drill. What do you got next, Artie? So next we'll go up to Copec. They had two points in the state drill. Uh, B ladder, C ladder. Copec, uh, interesting. They always find a way to get to this. great. Like, and it's, it's it, another it, team. it all fits out. They're another team. Obviously, we know every, but, you know, they've gone through. People leave and people cut, like, and they have guys depart and stuff like that. But it seems every year they're always in the Joe Hunter. Well, and they I always think find a way. That, yes, they're always, that's a great way to put it. They are yeah. always in the Joe Hunter, yeah, right? Always. And there is a baseline of talent. One of the big bright spots to me this year was was Dirty Mike, who I think really stepped into Just a role die, as a uh, hydrant. Billy, you can talk a little bit more about that. But uh, we've been uh, kind of giving Mike some flowers uh, and I, I don't want to say his last name wrong. Pet showers. Yeah, pet shower. There you go. I'm sorry. My I apologize. I didn't want to get it wrong. But uh, Mike kind of took that spot. Chris was running for a little while. 
Uh, Mike, I guess, coming back from the military, took that spot and has really made it his own. Um, I think he had a great year. Um, Fantastic. I, and uh, I'm looking forward to what he can do. I, you have more to say, I'm sure, on, yeah, on that, Billy. Yeah, second half of the season, they, they started practicing. He worked on it a little harder. He watched a few other teams, watched some tape. And he'll, he'll start with Central Islip from there forward. You could really see the difference in him. The way he pushed back off the truck, stood up. You know, he, he's a taller guy. He started watching some tape of uh, Mike Spatz, guys like his size. And I'll tell you what. He really did a great job lighting the hydro up from there on the rest of the season. And, uh, you know, really good to see Hose here for those guys. Uh, they got better with B.O.s as the season went on as well. And, uh, of course, you have, uh, you know, Mr. Excitement, you know, Chris Brandt. I mean, you give him any ladder. Yeah. That guy will climb anything. He'll climb upside down. He'll climb backwards. And, and he'll finish sure. the shot for you. And, uh, you know, not quite the year they were looking for there. But, you know, state tournament, they come out swinging. They take two out of three points in uh, a couple couple points in uh, B ladder, C ladder. So, uh you know, not not a bad day for them, and they're they're always on the board. Yeah, yeah. Like said they're always you, you can never count them out. They're always going to find, like you said, they find a way. Next up, we'll go. We'll bounce up to North uh, North Belmore. Two points that day at the state drill. I think that's a team that probably had a little bit more aspirations, right? Uh, yeah. I you know North Belmore beginning of the year um, had some manpower uh, issues flying around. Um, Pat Clowman, who'd been racing for them for the last few years, moved back over to uh, West Hempstead. Uh, Pat Ryan was in and out early in the, in the season. Um, they still had uh, the base. And I think you saw those those uh, flashbacks. I hate to put it that way because I think there's a lot of potential in this group. Um, but having Joe Corcoran on the back of that truck, um, handling super hot drops, climbing seven steps, and grabbing, uh, it doesn't always look magical, um, but... There's definitely a lot of potential in this team, and I also know that this group is probably not happy with what 2024 was coming off of a 2023 NASA Point Championship. Right. I think they lost Thomas Wade early in the season. He's a hydrant man, Digger. He's, he's one of the one of the anchors on the team. You know, he he came back getting ready for the state tournament. His, his brother Nick filled in for him, and they had some good shots. I mean, early on they they start the season up with a 528 B ladder, 782 team record in uh, in B hose, and that's both with uh, Thomas on the truck. They lose him after that, and uh, he comes back from the county. Not not quite the day they wanted. I mean, they still finished third, but uh, as as they got better, I mean, you look at the, I mean, their, their slash line across the board is great, but most of the times you see her earlier in the season. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at like their total points. It's like you see they're in like a three point range, then they go to the 16 point range. It looks like the Mets are going to score. What do we got? What do we got? The Mets are scoring. The Mets up. are on the board. Woo! It's like yeah. Lindor, right? Magic Mets, baby. With yeah, Vientos. So, yeah, the Dinks, uh, I tell you, it, 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 the one that really sticks out to me there is, is just the three-man ladder. I mean, 7-16, best shot of the year for these guys. You know, they, 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 uh, they've they gotten older. <laughs> yeah. But, and the, the one thing, that, again, that sticks out to me is, like, they're scoring 16 points, 16 and a half points, 24 points, but then they're scoring two points, four points, five points. So that's that. That's when you are replacing guys and you're switching guys around, that's what happens to you. Yeah, because it clicks one day and you're like, all right, we can do this. We're right there. Right. And then you go to the following week and you get four points. I'm like, what happened? It's just because you don't have the experience or guys in the same spot every week or that have been there for years. Right. And it just uh, you, you it's just it's such a fluctuation. I mean, absolutely. If you look back, go back to last year, they, they, they were on a streak of uh, seven drills in a row where they scored a both B and C ladder. Right. I mean, that that's a that's a great streak. I love that one for a good team. Yeah, like that, but, without uh, a doubt, man. That's awesome. And uh, you'll go to state tournament, they, they don't place a point. But <laughs> 906 didn't get you anything. But, but that no, being no. said, North Belmore in the Joe Hunter there for 2025. Yeah. So uh, they're, yeah. they're in the mix. Yep. So next up, North Londoners, Piston Ockers. Three points uh, at the state drill. Not the day they won. Not the day they won. And obviously, we talked about them. They won the Central Ice of Invite three weeks earlier on the course. Um, so, and they just, you know, to me, you look at North Lindy the last number of years, they always had those points coming out of line, right? So they get out, they're always getting on the board and, and have won B ladder and C ladder a ton in the last, you know, five to 10 years. Yeah. Have won a, one of those contests in the state drill and come out with nothing. Yeah. Frustrating. And it, it's frustrating and it changes your day. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Because now you're going into C hoes and B hoes going. We need 10 points. Well, yeah, and now you're swinging for the fences, right? And that right. that's the challenge is and, – and I think that's how a lot of times a zero-point day at, after ladders turns into a low-point day right. at the end of the day because now you're taking Hail Marys. You're, you're, you're going yeah, for it. You know what I'm saying? Saying, like, I, And you have to. You know, I, like, I've raced like that. You need big numbers. Yeah. I, I, I was on teams where we had a race like that at times where – 
you didn't have the latter day where you got one or two points. But Wes Sable or whoever was winning with 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially and, those Mike Merritt days, right? Where, so like, like, you know, <laughs> just brutal. You know, like, right. oh, so, God. You know, we're all losing by, by – it's, it's, the, it's the third contest and we're all losing by 10 already. You know, like, yeah, yeah I get it. So it's like you got to, you're going into your host shots going, okay, just, we have to run like a, the heaviest number we possibly can. Here. Right, I right. Let's go back to North Lindy now. Well, first year driving for Vinnie Bogart. I thought yeah. he had a fantastic season. You almost That's forget – that it's his, it was his first year. So it was seamless. I mean, it really was. I mean, uh, I don't know if I go seamless. I don't know if he would go seamless. I, I, but it, I, but I, for me, I mean, that. I, 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 cause, but I, the reason why I say that is because Vinny and I have known each other for a long time. Um, good days and bad days with with me and him. But I know that man's a perfectionist. Well, and I, he would be the first guy to tell you he didn't feel like he was seamless, which is nuts. You did your first year driving. You you're gonna have some hiccups. You have to, you know. But he's he's the kind of guy that puts high expectations on himself. That's my point. Yes, and I agree with that. So he's expecting a lot out of himself. And I, you know, I saw some shots where I, you almost want to say he almost would have that crash nod, right? Like we'd be nodding his head, going, "Oh, I missed that one," because <laughs> you would uh, you would see that with crash and seat yeah. talk, especially. I agree. Right? He would be a little deep, and he's nodding his head, going down the track. Yes. So, I, you know, I'm sure he would want a couple. It's funny of how you put a guy in that B truck or C truck, and then they instantly like take on the personality of crash a little bit. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like it just kind of happens that way, you know? Like and then they reestablish yeah. themselves as the preeminent B host team out there. They won six sevens this year. That's amazing. Which is, yeah, I mean, with and him the driving. Mets, a couple more runs. Yeah, uh, just one. Right, and the Mets take the lead here in the eighth in, inning. In the eighth. It's all typical Mets fashion this year, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Don't score until we get to the seventh or eighth. Yeah. Um, Shades of 86 right here for the Mets. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> no, love no, no, it, love it. We always score but, late in 86. But it, just what Billy's point is, I mean, to do that driving your first year yeah. is phenomenal. And, I mean, for Chris to still have the consistency that Chris was having back there is, I, I mean. I was thinking about Chris today uh, as we were prepping for this. Um, I, I grabbed him at the Labor Day drill, and I said, hey, uh, so what are, you, is this, what are we going to do? I mean, I've been done for seven, and him and I are <laughs> ten days apart in age. Okay, I've been, I haven't run in seven years, and I feel like the oldest man on the planet. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm good. And what's crazy to me about him, and maybe this is a, a testament to – how they run the the uh, how they run BNC hose visually to me Chris has a harder time with efficiency than he does with BNC hose oh, like I, I think that's the case for a lot of he guys. might tell you that too think, well that's yeah. the case for a lot of guys but he's, hey, listen I, listen I, we all we ran that spot uh, him and I you know for years the he's he's sprinting for 50 feet and it looks to me like he hurts when he does that, then he goes and runs B hose in the hottest drop you ever seen. He runs it two one, and he looks like he's twenty five years old. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. I but I prepped him and said, "Hey, listen, are you, are you finished? Are you done?" He's like, "No, I'm going." So we got lots of Chris Connell to come here, um, who has a hundred percent locked himself in for one of the greats of all time. He's a living oh, no legend doubt. right now, um, and we still get to enjoy what he puts on the track each week. So and the, and the cherry on the cake for North Lindenhurst. Shot of the year in motor pump at Hagerman. What a number that was. Almost breaks the record with a 49. 49. Heavy, heavy shot. Yeah, from North that North said that. Sneaky, too, right? If, you, oh. if you're watching that day at home, uh, the shot kind of comes in, and, uh, and you're like, oh, it's a good shot. And then <laughs> it was 5-4? There's only been like four of those ever. You well, know, like, did not waste a yeah. drop on that. That was something. That hey, was... we got Pete. What's up, kid? We all know Hagerman, Hagerman the uh, home of the record uh, right now. So, uh Record track, record team. Hey, uh, North Lindenhurst, an off day at the state drill. Rare for them. Still ran at, in the big eight, ran four of the best times in each contest out of the eight. All right, C-Hose 1222, B-Hose 771, efficiency 879, motor pump 549. Um, that, That's that, a slash line and a half right I, there. I think <laughs> when I'm North Lindy, I go to bed at night. I'm like, what happened? Well, you know, like I, it's frustrating. <laughs> the water test. <laughs> oh, that. Listen, and we should talk about that too. Let, let's talk about it. But, um, you know, obviously that changes the whole. I mean, listen, they hope they probably, if they could look back right now, they're probably wishing they didn't break the record. <laughs> What's crazy is, um, I mean, and we've, I have, I've talked with those guys for for a while about this. They, they, the water's running really fast for everybody's stuff. But the truth is, nobody probably pulls any hose that day. 
if they don't call general judges. Right. Oh, no. So, the, but, and the reality is their day obviously changes dramatically. It does. It does. <laughs> you know, they, they come in the top five if they win that contest. The whole, the yeah. whole tournament changes. I mean, it, it, it does. It shuffles points around, but it guarantees them the top five by winning that contest. Right, 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 right. It gets them, yeah, it gets them in, in the mix. Yeah, they get five and, and hard to knock out at that point. Right. Yeah. So, and, and for them, obviously, that's a frustrating moment. I get it, man. I, you know, yeah. it wasn't easy when it went down. I, I you know, as, as someone who, benefited from it. Right. It's hard to watch that kind of stuff happen. And last point on them, uh, nice job by the uh, two rookie diggers. Uh, nice job uh, getting, getting Ducky back in the game, 9-0, 5-1 this year. So uh, good to see Ducky uh, climbing that ladder again. Yep. What we got next? Bayshore. The uh, Redskins. Redskins from Bayshore, four points at the state drill that day. Three points in Seahawks, 12-52, and a 22-84 in Buckets got him a point. 22-84. Bayshore on the season. I, again, up and Special lines are 654, 561, B ladder, 947, C ladder, 1252, C hose with the Butler, 816, their best shot, B hose, 927, efficiency, 625, pump, 2284, buckets. And, and those are spread out, you know, across the bottom of the board, more or less, towards the end of the season when, as they got more experience into them. But I tell you, Butler had a really nice tournament at the. Uh, at the state and earlier in the year. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I think he's got a ton of potential there. Oh, his he's hands not, are his hands are lightning. Yeah. He's got a good eye for the target. I, again, they just need to clean up a couple of things, and I think they can chip away at a couple of contests and take some tents off and uh, well, you know, I mean, that's more of a player. Team. What's that? Well, give your home team a little, little, little love here. Come no, on. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I think in, in ladders, there's potential there that they can easily take some tents off. And if – and you know, you're looking at the 561, 947. I think that they can get to that 54 range, 91 range, and all of a sudden it changes your day. You, know, you might not get five points, but if you have four extra points that you normally don't have, it changes everything. I'd like to see CJ get a little more aggressive on the ladder now. He's, he's got a couple years under his belt with this team, and uh, I think they're giving a pretty good ladder now. And uh, earlier in the season, he, he had a, a nice couple of shots, but it just seems like he's not committing 100%. Go get it. <laughs> yeah, I, and he's a tall kid. Listen, yeah. I, I think we forget where Bayshore was like three years ago, right? And and the the violence that has happened with the program, <laughs> you know, um, it it I'm sure that the, everybody feels it who races for Bayshore. If you go back ten years and look at what's happened to the Bayshore Redskins, right? What 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 the Bayshore Redskins have been through. Right. And uh, a team that didn't even run ladders three years ago. Right. A team that won the state tournament six years ago. Right. A team that was five buckets away from winning the state tournament nine years ago. Like, what a wild ride it's been for the Bay Shore Redskins. Now here they are uh, finally running all eight again, putting in heavy practice. Um, to me, the, the, the biggest uh, green shoots to me is see hose and be hose. And I was surprised when I went through and we started looking at all the all the different um, uh, highlights that we had. How many of those runs were good, solid, not base shore, going for it, hose runs? No offense. <laughs> okay, I grew up in an era where the base shore Redskins were trying to break the state record every, every time run. they ran B and C hose. And up. now I see a base shore Redskins that's laying down good run after good run. And, uh, I mean, it's a different theory, in all fairness. We got another base hit. It's a different theory in how to play the game. But that being said, uh, I that to me is where Bayshore is scariest. Everything else always kind of files in, it feels like, you know. Yeah, I, I and mean, CJ is the king, right? That, 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 if he can take the next step into that playground, it's, it, he's got a real opportunity. Yes, it, it really comes down the ladders from them. Can he take the next step? Can they just trim off those tents that we're talking about? Because, yes, they're running C and B goes better. They know how to run the last three. They, Bayshore's know how to run the last three for the last 15, 20 years. Yeah, I mean, it's not always as clean as some other year. No, but if they're if they're they within if they're within shooting distance, they, they're gonna put in the time for those last three two to make them perfect. Right. You know, and and they, sure know they know how to run all three, and they know how to run all three pretty heavily. Yes. So, but also had to deal with a couple of injuries there. You you, you lost Jimmy Leggio for a couple of, basically two seasons where he broke his leg that bad. Yeah. Uh, Skippy was out with that bad knee injury. So uh, 
they had to they had to make do with some other people too as well. No, that Skippy got deployed last year too. Yeah, all right. He was basically the MVP of the 2018 state drill. And then he went there and had to go to Africa. And we needed him to beat Rommel. <laughs> in Libya, I think. I'm not exactly sure about that. I got to look that up. We're going to bounce up to the team we were talking about a lot earlier. Miller plays extinguishers, four points as well that day. 548B ladder, 949C ladder. And really not, you know, I'm sure, that, again, much bigger aspirations. Run a 1276 and see how get nothing. Yeah. Yeah, 1276 at C high. Yeah, and got nothing. All right. Yeah. So... Uh, no, no. Yeah, when that and and what's impressive to me about Miller Place is that um, it, when it comes to that twelve seven, that that was their run of the year. I think that was their best run, and they continued to shave tents off in C hoes, which was the most impressive part. Obviously, those guys can run some B hoes. We know that, um, but for them to be able to uh, to to like when they first got the truck back, it was running like oh, three eighty yeah. to the cones. Yeah, yeah. They were in like no man's land. You know. Really? They, oh, but, they, yeah. they got the penalty at Labor Day, right? Like, that's the kind of team that this group is right now, and, is they're going to try to get everything they can out of their gear. They're going to try to get everything they can out of every run, and then it just comes down to being able to do the, the hard parts. That's it. Yeah. Well, she got the penalty a couple of times this year. With that yeah, yeah, which and is an incredible, a credible pit. They, they literally were begging for a tranny, I think it was, at the beginning of the year. Like, they, had, they so were I struggling. For yeah. Those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I even talked to, to Rick, and he said that. <laughs> Go ahead. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Trying no, to keep, but they uh, so this, they, they, they're they, trying to keep this guy in the right so, so, direction. So, <laughs> they run the truck. I don't need to apologize to anybody. They, else. they run their truck in second gear, which is why it doesn't have that high rev rate like we hear from the other trucks that go one two. They start in two, so when the time hits the uh, hits the cone, it's at full power. Right. And you don't realize it didn't sound it better, has. but exactly. it did go fast. But the numbers yeah. are right there. They're right at the three forty five, three fifty at the end of the season. If you're a team right now who isn't consistently running. At the cone, especially if you're not consistently doing it. But if you're just a team that's not running uh, your 350 to the cone all the time, take a look at running in second gear. Yeah. There's your nugget for the day. M- Miller Place, just looking at your uh, little sheet here, Bill. A lot of pink. Is that team pink records? Are their uh, best shots of the year? Best shots of the year. And how many team records did they break they, this they year? They said a couple this year. I mean, easily, right? I mean, B ladder, they definitely broke the team record. The 548 at uh, the uh, state and, tournament. Well, that was and 542 the week before. Oh, 542, yeah, there you go. That's their state. Oh, this yeah. Is it. This is it. Okay. I had a. Yeah, this is my stuff. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, 542, they said they said that. <laughs> Don't look at my material. In B ladder. No, no, no. It's just, it's, this is supposed to be down here. It's a. It's an older sheet. I mean, I just look at some of the numbers. I mean, 790, tw- uh, 279s at B holes. 891 and. Woo, woo, he's coming home. He's safe at there. Let's go, let's. So I love this. Yeah, I mean, eight's in efficiency. We're going to do a show tomorrow if this is going to keep up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you will just come back every day, damn it. A couple of eights in efficiency, uh, a low 6-1 six, in a 6-1 in the county. That was, a, that was a heavy shot. They needed it at the, uh, you know, we out at Ridge for the uh, Suffolk County Tournament. They, they, they needed some points. They, they was getting away from them. They, uh, they scored early. They put up a, a four-pointer, 613 at Ridge. And that was a good-looking motor pump shot. Back it up with a 2196 in buckets. They ran a 2110 earlier this year at the uh, Selden Invite, which I thought was the best bucket contest of the year. I mean, we saw some heavy buckets at Selden. And I thought we were going to see some more earlier, you know, later on this year. And, you know, next next tournament, the you know, 2483 gets a point. <laughs> Love it. Guys, That's four to one Mets right now. Just, just last thing with Miller Place as we, we talk about them. You know, Scotty the team, top the five, pickup. top five, you know performances this year, and then you have those four point performances. And Chris, you've been on those teams as well. It's it's so hard to do it every week. Yeah, and, yeah. But they they took the first step. Mm-hmm. So now, do they stay together? <laughs> You know, <laughs> yes, yes. yeah, they're staying together. This group, right. they love, love this. this is a, this oh, is a they're, family they're, group. Like, right. yeah. So stay together. Yep. And say, okay, where, how do we take that? Where's the little tweak? What's the little thing that gets us there? I think part of it is don't have the expectation on the day. Just go race the way you practice. Right. Just, you don't try to come in first. Don't try. Right. Let it happen. Well, I, you know what's funny about That's these guys? Opinion. I mean, I, I'm so close to these guys, right? Obviously, you know, Scott was on the Hobos for a while. Uh, we were super close with these guys from when we won in 2010. They won the old-fashioned state. 
And we said, hey, guys, come down with us, jump on our trailer for the victory party. And we brought them down. They would, Remember, Suffolk wasn't winning old-fashioned states very often, right? right. So, uh, so, we, so we threw them on the trailer, and they partied their asses off. And then from that point on, we've always been super close with these guys. And uh, every single year, and we've watched these, these guys. It's the same guys who uh, we're thinking about getting a B truck. All right. Uh, that was going pretty well. All right. We think about getting a C truck. Hey, that was a pretty good year. Hey, most improved team in Suffolk County, like four years in a row. Right. And like, I almost feel like a broken record where when we're talking racing with those guys, it's like, Hey, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And it's hard to see that it's coming, but it's coming. Yeah. Right. When I remember when central Islip, you know, we're, it's just like 2006, 2007. And, uh, I'm like, uh, we're getting, disappointed and depressed because we think we can do better at the state drill than we do. And every year we show up at the state drill, we face plant. I remember going to a bar, we're hanging out with the Hempstead Yellow Hornets. We're always like our older brother team. And I, was just, I grabbed Jojo, I pull him aside and I go, Hey man, like, what, like what, what is, how do you guys just like dominate? Like what, like what is, how do you keep that consistency? And his answer was someday you'll just be the old guys. You're going to look around, and yeah. all the people that you were scared of, they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and you guys are the guys who've been doing it longer than everybody else. Hello, Ice of Wolves. Right. right? And on, you know, a lot of these guys on, on Miller Place got a later start than most yeah. in their careers. Yeah. But at some point, they're going to look around, and they'll be the guys who've been doing us longer than everybody else. And that's when the consistency comes. Yeah. They yeah. also cracked the top four twice this year in Suffolk County, which that's a big step to break into the top four yes. against uh, – you know, the, 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 the uh, competition out here, we always see. The, the, the remaining step for them is a couple of tents in each one. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to spend all winter searching for those tents. I know them. They're going to do it. And, and have a clean sheet. Have, have, have eight solid runs in a day. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. So going to our next team, East Ice of Guzzlers. Five points at the <clears throat> State Drill. 1239 12, Seahose. Should, no, no, should have been 10 or 9. It should have been 9. Should have been 9. So 9. So they're, nine. They were should have been 9. So they're in second place. <laughs> yeah. Seahose. Yeah. When it gets 784, they ran on the second place shot. They ran a 786 the week before at, at your invite. So uh, back I, to back heavy shots by the sandbag. Nick Mata there. Who says you stink, by the way? I, he does say I stink. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, Debbie Paterno checking in from the. Uh, hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, checking in from. Uh, North Lindenhurst, hi Debbie, how you doing? Um, what a back if you're back. watching from home, uh, hit us in the comments. We'll let you. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a little shout out. Sure will. But, hey, listen, I, I guys, I, I am team. so out of team. I, I am so sick of these guys. Just they they change the player, they change the name on the back of the jersey, and they win C hoes and B hoes at state tournaments. That's what they do, and like the the. I mean, I spent my whole time running, coming in second place in Seahose to the East Ice of Guzzles. And now here we are. We're going to do it all over again? Seriously? I, enough's enough. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, I, I just, I said to Tom Driver, who's here tonight, um, I said, hey, listen, I'm making the, uh, you know, we're, we're putting together the, the highlight reel on the video. And I got like five runs, you guys, because you didn't show up any tournaments, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, can you guys come to another few more tournaments so I get some more highlights, you know? Mm -hmm. It's incredible to me that this group, and again, it, they've totally refre refreshed the team. They've got new players in position, and those guys Crazy. are playing at the top level in the sport right now. It's, it, 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 it's awesome to watch. You go from Chucky and Eric to uh, to Nick and, uh, and Robbie, Sh Nick, Nick Mata, Robbie Sharp up top, I tell you. But <laughs> not much of a difference there. Robbie Sharp, sir, Bobby Browse. Uh, <laughs> His, his, I always I like felt Bobby like Brown. there That's was, th like, like Nick was almost kind of like programmed for this a little bit, but Bobby to me is what I've loved the most is because Bobby's not as young as you think. Right. And he decided he wanted to do this. Yep. Right. And he's also got a lot going on. He's the first assistant chief of the department. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he just got married. Like he's, he's got a lot of life happening, but he said, no, no, I, I want to be Nas man for these types of guzzlers. And, and they've put together. Quite a ferocious little host team, but yes, Billy, you're right, guys. Let's let's have some B ladder practice next week. All right, yeah, come on. Get, what are we doing? On, we, we let's got, go. We got Benny the Jet for ready. Come on, <laughs> yeah. man. Put him back on the ladder. I mean, he, the guy runs a he runs he runs a heavy nine two or a, a, almost an eight a couple of years ago. Well, what are we doing? Get him on the ladder. Yeah. Let's go. Hey, uh, by let's the way, you, um, you got still, a couple points, so you can you can you can you can get into the game. Come on. Yeah. 
Phil Falco checking in. Uh, Phil, Phil is uh, part our, the leader of our social media team who took care of all these highlight videos. Thanks, Phil, man. They, they came out great, buddy. Uh, he's uh, he's checking in on the comments. Just so. watching it here. I mean, no one no one runs a tighter line than Tommy Driver. We're watching it right there. He puts him two steps away from the hydrant, right on top of it. Yeah. Good looking shot right there. But but knock it off, guys. Let's go run all eight next year. Yeah. All right. What do we got? West Hempstead Westerners, five points. Five points well. for the day. Five points for the day. 827 Bho's got him one. 2188 buckets in the day in a positive with four points there. But, again, mm -hmm. the team going in, not the day they were hoping for or anticipating. Now, Nassau County uh, champions as well this year. Good season for the West Hempstead overall. Like I said, yeah, the, the state tournament, not what they were looking for. Came out with uh, no points out of three on the B ladder. 11.68 C ladder, so... He scored in that uh, consistent throughout the year, and uh, nothing there, nothing to show for it. Yeah, I mean, they, again, that day they ran a 12.90 CO's, no points, uh, you know, on the board. Uh, uh, here's my here's my hot take. You ready? The West Hempstead has uh, West Hempstead Westerners are the Miller Place extinguishers of Nassau County right now. Sort of. Yes. I'll give it to you. Uh, I don't disagree. I think I, they I think they're they're identical trajectories right now. With the well, difference being that West Hempstead seven years has the well, they're, they're they're babies compared to the Miller yeah. Place extinguishers. But also, West Hempstead has a little bit more of the program in place. I was going to say there's a pedigree there, right? I think, and it just it's a little bit of a different conversation to me because Miller Place has only been in this game for a short period of time, so to speak. I think West Hempstead can make the jump pretty quickly. Based yeah. on the pedigree uh, and where they were in the last ten years, mm -hmm. West Hampton knows how to race. Yep, they don't need. They're not learning how to race. Yep, they're just learning how to get consistent. How they're as younger teaching players. their guys to race. Yeah, right. right. To think about West Hampton. So you know, two years ago, they the whole team quits. Basically, gives it all to the new guys next year. Says here, it's all your team. The Danny Brome and his squad come. I think in. it was the thing with Andrew yeah. Brome yeah. kind of pissing everybody yeah. off that everybody That's walked right. away from so, the team. I think so was what it was. Um, Danny Brome picks up the pieces. Sinatra, <laughs> uh, Moderano. Because <whatever. laughs> I want to see the text in a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's going <laughs> off in a second. We got Moderano. We, we got Sinatra. We, we got uh, Gerard Bacher, one of the older guys on the team. You know, pick up the pieces, and I'll tell you what, they put a good job together. Cody Mara doing a good, nice job as the nozzle man. They run a couple of, they run a seven this year, nice 1250. Getting their uh, host team back together. I tell you, team to look forward to in the future right now. But they had a really nice season. They win the county point total for uh, Nassau County and a bunch of hardware to go along with that. Yeah, uh, Joe Martirano, uh running third man for them. Um, I think there's more in the tank than their 645 best run yes. of the year. I, I've seen yeah. a lot out of them. And this, the, the point, the reason why I say this about the Miller Place West Hempstead co comparison is I think they both have, t they're both tenths away. Like, oh, they yeah. just need to shave a couple of tenths off in every one of these contests. Here's their best runs of the year. Ready? 645, six, uh, 565, 934, 1250, 798, 9 flat, 650, 2188. Yo, those are big numbers. But guess what? And they got more. You're there, right. There's a couple tenths there. And, right. and now the question is, and, and I think this is kind of hard because as a Nassau team, right, um, the, uh, the competition at Nassau only drills – forces you to try to play the racing game sometimes. And so your instinct is just like the way B ladder was four years ago, where you're interested in running some some okay shots with decent drops just to take your three. Right? Versus how are you gonna practice West Hempstead? Are you gonna practice for the CI invite or are you gonna practice for the Nassau County drill? Right? Yeah. And you have more of a shot. If you if you're pushing that drop, which is where those tents are going to come from you're going to be inconsistent. Are you going to do that or are you not going to do that? You know, right. One of the things I've seen with Kenny Brome, I think, I, you guys disagree or agree, um, I think Kenny picks a drop at the beginning of the year. He just goes with it. This is my drop. This is what these guys get now. Yeah. At the beginning of next year, maybe they're pushing that drop. Right. But I don't ever see him, I guess, like year to year messing with the drop, which there might be a, a recipe to that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess Kenny's been an outstanding driver. Kenny, come on, fantastic I mean, driver. He's Give him a Raboli. <laughs> he'd, say don't, he'd say, I don't want a Raboli. He don't need, yeah, he'd tell you go scratch. I, I got a bro. Yeah. <laughs> he don't I mean, need nothing. Yeah. He's, he's done everything to that thing that he needs to do. Yeah, tell you. And he yeah. runs fast and it runs good. Yeah. His transition times. You mean, know, the thing, too, is like you look at the 645 and three men, right? Well, three years ago, that 645 was a player. Yeah. Right. You know, all right, you're saying, okay, I ran 645, 642. One, one team's meeting. Right, right. Now, three minutes take like a little bit of a resurgence. 
I don't know if I'm getting, you know, yeah, it's fourth, right. fifth. Three minutes come back in the last couple of seasons. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's with it's, a vengeance, and it looks Yeah, and that's what's insane. That, that is the thing that starts to happen is all these teams start to push on each other. Right. Right, and now all of a sudden, you can't be taking none of those stopping steps at the bottom of the ladder, bro. You got to go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're looking for that four flat in time because you got to go. You know? You're not kidding. And I'll um, tell you, don't, don't count them out. I mean, buckets, they're uh, they one overtime, but other than that, the lowest time of the year was a, a 23 2. I mean, yeah, they, 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 they're a real good bucket again, team. Uh, you know, they're going to learn buckets fast. They know how to run it. They've always had that pick at the bottom. They've always gone to the, you know, uh, Ralphie. Dumping up there, they they have someone that can teach them how to dump and score. Billy's waving to somebody. I don't know. You waving to Paul? Trying to get a cocktail. Team. Looking for a little cocktail over here. We're gonna move up next, though, uh, Bill. If you're listening, I know, I know you're busy. Uh, this guy needs a he needs a vodka club cranberry. Okay, can can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, Point Point Pleasant Pea Pickers. All right, so Point Pleasant Pea Pickers, i got to tell you something. Five and a half points, sixth place in the state drill, five and a half points. Well, let's just set the, set the, set the season where it begins. I mean, it uh, starts off a tragedy in the wintertime. We lose Danny Ott. Yeah. Tra- I mean, that was terrible. We go up there. Uh, I go up there with Daryl, uh, Stanley, a bunch of guys. Uh, 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 Paizo comes up with us, and uh, just, a, just a sad, sad start to the year for these guys. You know, Christmas time, and uh, – Danny Ott and Danny Ott Sr., we've known him in Westbury for years and years. Go up there to see him. And we raced in their tournament this year as well. And uh, just a uh, uh, real heartbreaker out there. It's, can't, can't say enough up there, uh, Point Pleasant. So, we, uh, anyway, it's a good season for these guys. They, they got to bring this guy Merkel back. And uh, he, he raced with them about five, six years ago. And he, uh, he comes in to throw and runs, uh, runs wow. second man and three man for him, Marco Vasquez. And I tell you what, this kid, he is strong. He is fast. I tell you, I put him in a third man hole. Actually, Jack did a good job too, but I mean, we'll, we'll tell about it. I mean, Take us through it. State tournament again. We'll just go where they got their five and a half, five twelve B ladder. I mean, obviously, we know they can always put up that shot with, with Michael Klein. Five twelve B ladder that that maybe maybe Lenny the Albert doesn't uh, doesn't think exists. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a little spike on the line, right? I don't know. Uh, and then apparently, there's a piece of yellow uh, asphalt in uh, Point Pleasant somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> someone put it in their pocket quick. <laughs> nine eighteen, uh, uh, nine eighteen efficiency got him a point and a half. Yeah, um, but uh, but whether they hit the yellow or not, you know no, that's a contest that shot. they can run. I mean, and we even had a nice look at that on our uh, jumbotron. Right. And it, it was it was super duper close. They had it zoomed right in on that thing, and it was I don't know. It's I, a, it's I, a heartbeat. I'll just be honest. With my hey, dad, guys on the track, should, they have the call. Not, so not I, was, top. I was in the trophy stand, you know, area that day watching and had a pretty good view. I thought he clipped it the way some of the reaction was. Okay. But then I saw other guys then pointing as they were taking the ladder down and like holding their fingers like two inches apart. So I'm yep. saying, oh, maybe he didn't catch no, it. No, I, I was going to say, and that's, that's, you know, so guys on top of the arch got a little excited that day. But guess what? That's why we have people on the bottom. They they see the call on the field. Right. The call on the field is it's a five twelve, and uh, here you go four points for point plus. But yeah, good, good season for these guys. Uh, you know, I tell you they they came down here twice this year. Obviously for the state tournament, they came down for the CI invite as well, and uh, always good to see them down here. Just just not the day they really wanted. They they blew off on the nozzle a couple times. You know, I thought Eric Thomas really had a had a good shot at the CI invite. That would have been a, ni- a nice hammer there. Uh. Yeah, I mean, you look at their their C ladder times. You know, nine twenty three being the best. You think they would be able to, you know, that truck get a little bit new thrower and all that. But yeah, uh, and so. it's it's, it's it, you know it's it's tough when you're not running down right. here on the best of tracks against the best of competition. They're running against us against three teams, right. maybe maybe two teams I, up there. I think it's you, it's hard to race like that and run the shots you need to run. To play here, I think I anticipate yeah. them knowing that their desire for the sport, their passion for the sport, that we see them next year kind of back into Uncle the. Billy. We'll see them next year back into where they were like two or three years ago. Yeah, they're, they're going to be all right now. You know, Kyle Vaccaro always does a great job with the hundred. The Durleth boys, uh, big shout out to those guys. Et just just getting he's going to get married. Oh my God, how sick is that? Don't do it, kid. And uh, like I said, always always a good job up there. Mark Thomas, thanks for taking care of me and. Uh, Big shout out to Shamrock Jacks. I'm sure they're watching up there in Notre Dame country in uh, Seabreeze, New York. All so right. 
We're going to move up to... Guys, by the way, the, the Wi-Fi and fatties is uh, not great. So we are uh, streaming off my phone right now. Hang in there, everybody. Switch over. Uh, thanks for making the jump. Well, hopefully you got some of that. So. Yeah, no, we did. We, and I got to record it, too. So, so now we're going to jump into our, top, our top five. five, Chris. Here we go. So top five. Dun, 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 dun. And a first. Where's the music, Steve? Dun, 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 dun. Top Let's five. Let's your music, you know. Team. Seven points. South Hempstead Rascals. And they do it all in the first three contests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And and you would think that's okay. You would think hey, you're on the track, <laughs> yeah, and they're down the track. But you would think they might be getting some hose points, right? Uh, um, you know, they they blew a hose earlier in the season, and Spats just wasn't the same after that. He finally got it back together later on in the season, but it just wasn't wasn't Spatsy until until they got the Labor Day when they throw up a seven seventy six. But again, talking about three man ladder, have we've seen a resurgence? Six forty three gets him three points that day. Uh, to start the day, and then they get the 901 C ladder shot that got them four. That gets them their seven points. Um, 901, and that was, you know, and they're like, why well, couldn't I just give, just couldn't just give it 899? <laughs> right. I, like and, but I think that's a shot that, I mean, so they ran a 908 before that. A 908 the week before, 926. So it's a, if you look, there's a steady, there, there, here's the team, right? Or a contest where we say you can take 10 off. So they go 950 at the Hunter. Then they go 926 at their county. Then they go 908 at the Invitational in Hempstead. And then they go down to 901 at the state drill. So they took basically a half a second off the contest in six weeks. Yeah. And, it, and you know, it really showed this. And it's, that's, 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 not a, uh, that's not an anomaly. I mean, you could see how hard they were working. I mean, Ryan Marr, you, you asked about guys that really stepped up. So you got guys you didn't know about before the season. Ryan Marr put his stamp on the season. Said, "Here, yeah, I want to be. I want to be one of those timers that you talk about." Yep, and uh, and exciting because because he's so young, yeah, right, and because that's such a family generational operation right now, um, the potential is really there. Oh yeah, and Spats ain't going anywhere. Spats no, knows no, he's no. like this is the first team in my career. I, first time in my career, I got a ladder team. I'm not. Out. I'm not out. <laughs> I'm in, bro. Oh hey, buddy. Yeah. Thanks, man. They run that, so they they, they finished the year up. So they had they had some, some serious lab. I tell you, Ryan Marr, when you watch him at the top of the ladder, we're, we get to watch the best seat in the house. I got to tell you, one of one of the uh, cool things you do get to do new broadcasting is you're on top of the arch. You see Ryan Marr coming to that ladder. He is totally focused on grabbing that thing. And I tell you, his stab on the on the on the run is as, is as hard as anybody's out there. So well, listen, he, he makes up a tenth just on the grab itself. You know, obviously being merged with the Hornets, there's guys that down there that can teach at that track. So you know they're gonna they're learning. To race the right way. Now, I, I don't know about TJ. TJ has been running for. No, T, it's about the same. They're, they're all in the same boat. They're okay. All, they're but it seems like, like it seems like just 19. looking at his, uh, you know, as he stepped in, he's kind of fre he's like the missing piece almost here a little bit. I don't know if he's a younger guy or an older guy. Um, again, I don't know the group too well, but I know that for a lot of his positions, this is his first year running a lot, of them, you know, and and uh, so I, I, the potential there. There, there's two different kinds of team growth right the west hempstead and miller place growth is like this incremental chopping away thing then you get the south hempstead rascals which it's like how do i harness this this talent which is a totally different thing you know um and and, and it's a different growing pains too you know i think i think you're going to see both of those teams or all three of those teams kind of competitive on the same level next year but for different reasons, and maybe with higher ceilings or lower floors. You yeah, know, so the Rascals had a couple injuries early in the season. That's why TJ had to step up, became the thrower. And then also TJ took over as the dumper as well in buckets. That's why the, the bucket times didn't get where they were going to be. But uh, the rest of the team, I tell you what, looks fantastic. End of the season, they got they got they got hoses straightened out. They won a 776 at Labor Day for five points, uh, and that was a shot. Now get this one now. So Ryan Marr. He doesn't have one eight to his career. He has a bunch of nines and a seven seven, <laughs> not one eight. <laughs> I thought that was kind of an interesting thing there. Uh, Fifteen points they scored at Labor Day. They uh, they finished I think third overall in uh, yeah. Nassau County points. So good season for those guys and, and the Marr family. Uh, Tommy Marr uh, doing the driving, of course. Uh, Mr. Pay it forward. Uh, yeah. He does a great job. Absolutely. Goes around the country 
don't know if you guys know about this, but yeah, like, absolutely. Wherever there's a, a tragedy in America, and I'm, I'm sure he's he's putting something together for these uh, victims down in uh, North Carolina. He uh, he has a van and he he puts together stuff and just shows up out of nowhere. A random act of kindness, pay it forward on the side of the van. If you see that van, you know that's Tom Marr. You know he's doing something good. His, his daughter Kelly, daughter TJ, daughter and <laughs> daughter TJ <laughs> might as well be uh, no, son <laughs> TJ and Ryan as well. So we have a, a real Marr group going on. And I tell you, Dylan Pilgrim did a really nice job second half of the season running three men. That's where you really see the ladders, uh, the times come down. Starting at CI, he, he really stepped up his game. So uh, go looking forward there. Let's see what uh, Southampton has her just, next season for us. And just to, before we move on to the next team, Chris, to say, how do you harness, like, how, you know, like comparing, say, the Miller place to Southampton? To me, how do you harness Southampton? By scoring seven points and coming in fifth place in the drill. It reinvigorates or gets that mojo or keeps everyone involved going, oh, wait a second. Yeah. We got something here. Yeah. So let's just, now we just, all right, there's going to be a little bit more focus going into the season next year. So and there's so, a little bit more off-season chatter together. Right. It, it, they're all of a sudden your team bonds a little bit more. Yep. And it, that's how they're different maybe. I love this center. thought. Right. So getting to – practice on april 1st that was always like our okay thought. really right <laughs> fagan fagan really that was what sam said this year <laughs> well they, they were ready man they I were hungry know. and this is my point kind they of is, flat. They, is they, they really you can't off. you can't force everybody to do that but if you have a team that wants to do that that's the key right that's the that's the step that goes because it proves one of two things number one you're getting reps earlier than everybody else but number two you're hungry right and it's so easy for South Hempstead to practice on April 1st in 2025. Point Pleasant, who did not do what they wanted to do and who have been waiting for their moment, that's a tougher April 1st. Plus, it's also 20 degrees out of there. But like, <laughs> but my point being that like, when you're in that, that point where you got that taste of success, man, you can get out early and hit it hard. The harder part and sometimes the more valiant effort is in that April 1st team that was disappointed in 2024. Getting there and getting practice going and by the by mid-April. You, know, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Right? The only thing there is I don't think you'll see Mike Spatz on April 1st. <laughs> to the rest of the <laughs> no, he's busy. Busy. You guys go ahead. You guys go out. I'll, I'll see you May 1st. <laughs> Save him till June. You guys June, go out. June 14th is a good time to bring him yeah, out. Right. Get him ready for the show. <laughs> right. so, so, I have so much confidence, though, that Spatz, because nobody beat himself up more. I think he had so many opportunities he's never had in his career. Oh, man. And you could see it in his eyes. You know, I, this is Hydra Man thing. You know, like you go, man, I, it sucks when like, all right, bro, keep it going. It's totally different than, ah, we got zero. I can go put my shit up. Yeah. You know? And so he's in an opportunity now where, oh, now you got to play. Yeah. As opposed to just go wing it. And he's going to get there. There's nobody has got more experience on the track than him. And, and he ain't going anywhere. So... So we're gonna move up the just good. God bless him for getting off the truck the way he still does. I mean, yeah, yeah. he gets off hot. Hey, Absolutely. Little shot to Danny Salerno. He's too Salerno tall. Too. He's too tall. Danny had a couple of nice folks up to see Danny Salerno. Salerno. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, we may not get to them later on, but uh, still running some high Shout out to another old guy getting it done. Yeah, he is an old guy. He threw a two five stay handle this year. That was a good shot. Two five. Ooh, at Labor Day, they dropped, dropped them hot. You're going to have to get my stuff. Oh, no, they, 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 they dropped them. Meniscus is everywhere. <laughs> he <laughs> just sprayed. Him. Meniscus is sprayed across he, the He track. looked fantastic in point play. Oh, I, I, he looked way better than I would look right now. That's for sure. <laughs> so we're going to move up the scoreboard that day. Fourth place, Hagerman Gambler, 16 points. Zero points in the first four contests. 16 of the last 20. A 4-5, four, 4-3. Four, 803 B hose, 895 efficiency, 581 motor pump, 2196 for three to round out their day. Back to back top fives for the gamblers. Um, and they move up to the fourth spot this year. Good to see. Right. And I think they're just in that third place next year. Let's go. Yeah. I'm, they're just, to me, they're one of those teams that they, they're running four, three, four contests well. Right. They can run the other contest. Can you find a way to run six? Yeah, yeah, and and here's another team that's that's got to get a couple of tenths, right? Five fifty two, best run of the year, B ladder. Nine forty four, best run of the year in C ladder. Couple of tenths. Six eighty two, three man. I mean, oh. they need they need to get a little younger, maybe a little quicker. They need they need they need a stud. Uh, Nothing not against you, Aaron Allen. I love you, 
No, I listen. We, I, we need to get a little quicker guy up there. I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, he. The, I broke I, his chops about it. At, at Hagel. <laughs> sometimes that five five is what teams wanted out of this, and this is my general point here. Going further, sometimes teams were happy taking that five fifty. Give me two. I could do that all day. Give me two. Right? Give me three. Let me let me chip away early and then have something to play with at the end. That's gone now. Don't come at don't come into 2025 with your 552. You guys are gonna have to go for it, right? And like that's and guess what? When it happens and it works, it's gonna be a 525. So and now the teams that were running 540, they're gonna go, All right, I gotta push it too. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's this thing, it's this natural thing that happens yeah. where everybody has to start taking a few more chances. That 552 is the best shot they've had in the last three seasons. I mean, so I mean, it's right where they are. I mean, that's that's I mean, you, you play the back of the baseball card sometimes. This, this is what you got. So, I mean, that's that's what they can put on the table. They just need to, to hope it sticks. I don't think anyone's really recognized them or have talked about them in ladders, right? We look at them in the last five times. Yeah. Yep. It's not there that it they is. can't. But so how do you become a player in those three contests? I know. I'm not saying it's changed the time. It's like, where do we find those tents? Right. If you're running a 552, it can get better. Yeah, yeah. If you're running 944, to me, this and even in the C contest, the 944 is easier to get to 924 than it is from 552 to 530. Yeah, yeah, That's, I agree. Right. Okay, because we can we can navigate. The yeah, if, you're run, if you're running a 552, you should be running a 92. Right. I'm just doing the math here from right. dig to grab. Dig to grab. Right. And, and now we can, if we can navigate our truck from the cone in. Funky here. Yeah, it seems like it's a little. Yeah. Uh, so if we can Travis. dial. How's that? A little better. We can dial that truck in a little bit. Steve's over there. Steve, the producer's over there. He's, he's, he's deep in fries. Elbow deep in his chicken fingies and fries. He turned down the Happy Meal gift, though, the prize, the toy, which I thought was uh, generous of him. So I, that's where, like, I look at C ladder. If you're running that 44, it gets to a 20, and you should be able to run the 20. Um, and I think they have the knowledge, the equipment to do it. So you, all of a sudden, you find a point or two there. You find three points there in ladders. Next thing you know, you're at 20 points in the state drill. You don't know what's going to happen. No, no, you gotta, gotta, gotta get, you got to find some points and ladders there. But let, let's look at the homes contest. I'll tell you what, uh, I thought Cola Arnold really uh, got it, got his game back together this year because uh, Aaron started picking his game. With the, they switched to Osman, obviously, last year when uh, Johnny uh, yeah. on the flap, John C. Amber leaves, goes to uh, goes to North Lindenhurst. And then so so he leaves him flat-footed, more or less, to start the season last year. So Aaron has to start from scratch. And uh, I think, you know, it, it takes a toll on, on the Hodger, man, when – you know, you keep flooding him, keep flooding him, keep flooding him. And all of a sudden this year, Aaron Allen gets on his game up top. His hands get a little quicker, just like Robbie Scharf was earlier when he took over for East Islip. Yeah, those, those two guys, yeah. they're lifers, right? They're very similar players, the two of them, you know? Yeah. And the season goes on, they get the CI. They, the CI was the coming up part for Aaron Allen. They run a 1249. Yeah. Get four there. They back it up with a 798. Both, I mean, right on the, I mean, the, the water's right up his tail. Yeah, he, it was close. <laughs> he got a click on that, and he started at the bottom, worked right up, and banged the target. Perfect. Nice looking job there. And I tell you that I think they've really got some confidence out of that coming out. Always run good efficiency. They've been at eight ninety five at the at the state. And uh last year they ran a they ran a heavy shot at the state tournament as well at the county eight ninety eight. But uh, good looking shot there and uh, always good motor pump team. Yeah, for sure. Labor Day they, they lost it. They lose the nozzle and they yeah. run a six twenty two. I wish I wish that's I would like to see in that shot or or Rodden shot. We'll talk about that maybe. Either one of those two shots, I would like to see him go clean at, at, at uh, Labor Day. Would have been a, a shot at the record. And they finished the year with the uh, fastest time of the year in buckets. I mean, we watched this bucket team for the last couple, three years coming together. We know they can they can hoist them as fast as anybody, but they were a little sloppy. They were dropping one here and there, and all of a sudden, last two tournaments here in New York State, they're running 2196 to get on the track, get some fourth place. Then Labor Day, with all the money on the line, they have to they need five points to get on the track. They need five points to take fifth place overall in county points. Suffolk County, and they run the best shot of the year with a twenty point seven two. And and, <laughs> and that was that this was is the enigma, shot. the enigma that is the Hager yeah. Gamblers, right? Like, I we struggle to understand what, because because it's so uneven, right? Like 
this is that was a, a monster bucket shot. And buckets traditionally is the hardest contest. It's the last one to get in, right? Yeah, Manhattan Lake Hill would tell you that like they could never get it to buckets, right? They couldn't figure it out. And Manhattan Lake Hill was one of the best teams that ever raced. And yet they would tell you, like, we could never put that last piece together. Here's the the Hagerman Gamblers who are are not playing at the consi- – they can run a shot, but they can't necessarily play. And then they put up this monster bucket shot. And they put up this monster motor pump shot, right? The efficiency is probably their most consistent contest, yeah. right? If you go – they look – last they, five years or six years. Right. I mean, they, they scored 19 points in the in, uh, uh, 19 points throughout the year. 14 of those are county points. They also scored 19 points in buckets. But it, to it, me, it, that – like, like I, I just – I have a buckets. hard time figuring it out. You know, because they're just, they're so good unevenly, right? And, like, it's not a consistency thing because, to me, that would have been the motorized contest, three-man. You get those together first, and then you figure out the let like, like, so they're just kind of, like, unpackaging themselves backwards. It's I, just, you know, like. It's just not traditional racing that we're used to seeing. You know, it's. it's, it's buckets is tough. You, you know that. You, you don't just wake up and, ah, let's go run a 21 it's not, bucks. it's not the. You don't see teams typically uh, running twenty seventy twos in buckets that can't run three man ladder at, at a heavy pace, say, or it's like, right. all right, this guy's they're taking their three man ladder crew, putting them on the ladder, they're gonna dump it in eight seventy five and Yeah. And take off from there. They're not doing that. They're they're not, yeah. But they then they just get up, they just sling and then, twelve and, and, and they're hoisting them as fast as anybody else there. Yeah. Well uh, the good course. thing is you see with them is uh, the consistency they they've kept the same same team on the ladder. They switched out Mark a couple of years ago and then uh, Look what they're doing now. They're really doing a great job on that lap. Guys, my, my girlfriend Paige is here. Hey, Paige, how you doing? Uh, get uh, get the hobo wings going. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bo. Now we're moving to the top three now. Top three, our third place team, Islip Wolves, the two-time reigning champs. We're looking for the three-peat. 17 and a half points uh, this, this year at the state drill. Five points coming out of ladders. And just kind of... Eight points it out just, of ladders. It didn't really click for him that day. Eight out of ladders. Uh, oh, sorry. Eight out of ladders. Sorry, eight out of ladders. And, we, and a, a little slip and see ladder. They, they easily could have been 10, 11 out of, out of ladders. I mean, Josh would like to have that one back. Yeah. And uh, It just didn't seem like it was the cleanest day. No, nah, but you know, the nice thing that day was they, they got Pyatt back for the state. They didn't have Pyatt earlier in the season. What, what, what a player he is on that team. Like, I tell you, he's one of those guys you don't know because he's not one of the skill guys. But right. When you when you're missing your guy, he was in the academy. He came back to help out for the uh, rest of the season after after the Hempstead. And uh, but you know, Josh, look at Josh. I mean, so so uh, we, we lose Pyatt, we lose uh, Target Smasher, uh, Matt Ryan. Not, yeah. He he, uh, he he calls it a day after the last season. He ends up coming in to help out a little bit here later on in the day. But uh, you know, so you have some new guys. I tell you what, Josh Josh Kaysen doing a really great job pulling pulling the nozzle out. I mean, you see him early in the season. Yeah. He throws up a seven seven at the county at twelve sixty. I mean, right off the bat, twelve sixty six at Lindenhurst, twelve sixty at the county. How how do you just do that? Just just bang, that's what the nozzle is. I just hit twelve sixes. I mean, that's a lot of <laughs> you know, I look at Josh though with something like that. You know, I think a lot of people were probably surprised, shocked. I wasn't that as shocked because he's been around the sport his whole life. I, I thought, you know, it was they had Cazetto right there, ready to go. Right. Cazetto was a pretty good nozzle with Lindenhurst. But he's I thought just for a, sure it would have been him, but but it's also a guy, but you're just, he's around it his whole life. He's, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So it, it's not like he's like, it was foreign to him. Well, the, but the funny part was, so so, so it's Selden, he runs the, uh, I'm sorry, I read, uh, yeah, he runs, he runs a 1260 here, he runs a 77. So Lenny's down there on the sideline. Lenny Gobber, not with us today. But, so Lenny's down there and he, and he grabs Josh and quick interview, hey, uh, you know, did, did, you, did you learn something from uh, from, from Matt Rod and how did you figure this out? He goes, well, my dad was pretty good awesome, man. Yeah. I also raced with Eric, and I raced with this guy, and I raced with that guy, too. And <laughs> yeah, I, but that's what it, and that's it was. What, it was just but the, the amount of nozzle, knowledge that he has in right. his family and in his upbringing. And his teammates and everything like that. And, you know, at some point, as you again, as you become an elder racing guy, you watch it long enough. Sure. You're going to be like, okay, well, I can give it a try because I've seen it enough. I know the basics of what I'm getting into, and his reflexes, uh, of course, are, are amazing. Yeah, I mean, the guy's you in phenomenal that. shape. And I mean, you, you see his workout videos yeah. in the off season. I mean, I like it that I, I I sweat watching him. I'm not. Like, <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, that's how we hurt his hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told you earlier. I'm not going to talk about that, but 
Yeah, like, so uh, a lot of sweating going on when you're watching Josh Kaysen's workout videos, huh, oh Bill? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you know, when you're running 1254 and getting a point and a half, you know, you, you're thinking some days you run those numbers. Yeah, biggest, uh, biggest day of the year for the uh, Wolves this year. They, they win the Joe Hunter. They come out with a, a, a five points out of ladders. They, they win three, man. Nothing else there. Then they uh, score a couple points at Seahawks, and then they, they go off on the last four events with a five-pointer at Buckets with their best shot of the year with the 22-28, uh, last shot of the day because they are the defending uh, champions. So uh, that, that was a great tournament. That, that was a lot of fun that day. It comes right down to the very last bucket. And and they got him by uh, by two tenths, I believe, to yeah, win the day to beat uh, West Hempstead, correct? Yeah, it was, that was a good tournament. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, Joe Hunter always a always a good time, and uh, hope we see you all out there this year. It's a good good cause, good everything there. I, my my only other thing I wanted to add about Islip is that like I, it almost felt even coming into this year like they were tired, man. It's been a rough couple of years for these guys. Yeah, you know, it's and they, they've, been, they've been beat up, beat down. And I don't mean rough. Just all. I mean, obviously, there's been such profound downs. Well, the there's a lot of ups. It's yeah, the emotional highs and the emotional lows are for them have been the extreme. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, and they're, 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 and and you know, when you talk to these guys about you know how much racing means to them and everything, um, it always means everything. But a lot of these guys, these guys give me crap all the times because I, I described them a couple of years ago. You know, they got a little older, they got a little tougher, they got a little daddier. A lot, a lot of babies, yeah. yeah there's a lot of babies, and that was my idea, but they love being a little daddier. They never let me live it down. So but but um they are they are the old men of the sport right now. Right. They, they, like you talked about that. They Tommy show, over there, he's got a baby running around. He, he's giving us a thumbs up over there. Yeah. <laughs> hey pal. They, a little daddier. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, you, you, you yeah, got you know, I, I never got my T-shirt, but you it's got fun. a pro career for the next fifteen years. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you got seventeen years to go. Do you could take your spot? So you got you got to keep going right. good. <laughs> but they're they're that team that can show up on any Saturday, and score twenty eight points, and you're not going to be blown away or shocked because there's the talents there, the knowledge is there, the, right? Uh, like it's all there. And, and they gave it a shot at the state tournament. I mean, they. Not, not the best tournament uh, at CI, not the best tournament at Hempstead, but New York State, they come out swinging with, uh, you know, like I said, eight out of the first ten. And if Josh doesn't slip there, you, let's see where that day goes, you know. Yeah. Listen, I, you know, look at their day, right? 622, eight, uh, 518, sea ladders, a, a slip, I think, and then a grab. 12, eight, yeah. 1254, 816 on the uh, on the rerun for three points. 926 for nothing. Just misses. Okay. 566 for five, and then a 23 So they're one bucket away, right? Sure. And, and yeah, they took 17 and a half. They're one bucket away from taking 22. And uh, an efficiency is just a massive day. These guys basically put their day up, right, after a hard year. And and they got beat. But, like, they, it was a lot of work for them to get to their day this year. Yeah. The beginning of the season, it felt like, how are the Isle Wolves going to put this together? I, I wouldn't have been upset to hand over the trophy after that day. Because after everything those guys have been through and all the effort that it took to get to that point, to put up a valiant day like that from the number one spot, don't yeah. forget, right, which I hate. Oh, it's, yeah. It's frustrating as all hell to see a team like that have to come out and run first. No offense to everybody else. But, like, it is a challenge in that position, even if you run on the track 100 times. And we shouldn't do that to teams that have the best chance to win. That's my opinion. But in the end... Uh, I, I don't think that the Isle Wolves have anything to hang their head down on, no, on how they bet. fought this year, is my point. Really good season for them. Good job by the Wolves. So up to our second place team, half a, just half a point a, ahead of the Wolves at 18 points, the West Sable Flying Dutchman. Um, oh, there we go. Hey. The Mets win. Go, Unbelievable. 6-2. Hey, Darren, all the rough one on you, buddy. I think they're applauding us. No, nah, not at all. Oh, okay. Let's talk about the West Sable Flying Dutchman. Yeah. So what a season these guys had. Uh, so uh, the West Sable Flying Dutchman, as we're making our highlight reel today, everybody's watching a couple of their shots. They had the most highlight shots out of any team, right? Just big, heavy number shots um, consistently over and over again. This is another team that, uh, I mean, they missed in Seahawks, but they scored in seven out of eight. In the day, right on, on, at the state drill, um, obviously not the way they wanted it to play out. 
But in the end, uh, nothing to be ashamed of here. 656, 508, 913, right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, 10 points out of ladders. You're you're sitting going. You're at camp going. Okay, we're in a good spot right now. Yeah, you're, you're right in the mix. You know. Yep. Can't um, say enough about uh, Billy Hoffman this year. I tell you, this couple seasons together. I mean, this year, this guy just gets better as he gets older. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I. Nobody has ever been able to get better at this at forty. Hgh. <laughs> Maybe I don't know if he'd admit it. He, he, so he runs a five oh eight at the state tour. That's a personal best for him. I mean that that's yeah. that's a heavy heavy shot right now. Five oh eight gets him five points there. That was nice. Nine thirteen backs it up. He ran a couple eights this year as well. And then uh, of course he runs a hydrant, uh, doing a really nice job. Billy Hawthorn, that's off. Great season for him. And of Absolutely. course the rest the rest of the normal players over there. And I thought Mike Mara did a really nice job driving this year. He really uh, he's settling into that spot very well. Yeah, I think Michael just says it's now it's he's made that transition. He owns the wheel there and I think he's done a phenomenal job. Yeah, he's he's uh he's quietly become one of the best drivers in the game right it's now. It's consistent. Yeah. It's yeah. Very, like you you very rarely see them not being left in the spots that they need to be no. to score points in their contests. No, and, and and there's that baseline thing that the that the West Sable Flying Dutchman always had, whoever was driving for them, um, this consistency. Right, that it was so easy to point to Mike Mara being the guy, right? Right, but in the end, like there was this base of talent, and it happened from the gas pedal all the way back to the entire team on the back step, and it's very clear that the formula still lives, right? And they know exactly what they have to do to win over and over again. I, um, they their consistency to me was probably the most impressive thing. Their numbers start to finish for the whole year were outrageous. I think one thing that stands out to me with them, they're very good at recognizing who their players are, and then they say, "Okay, these are our players who run these spots, and these are the way we run these contests with the players we have to be the best." Like, they're it's like they're a very well educated racing team. Yeah, I, it's a great point. I you know I know for 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 us, right, for the hobos, at least in my time, we probably kind of settled into how we do business, but we were hackers for years. We were trying everything, right? But I mean, Billy tried to illegalize the the nubs on the hose. We know, Bill. We it's we illegal, we were constantly trying to tweak gear, trying book. to tweak how we played the game. You changed the rule book. There's there's rule book stuff in there. There certainly is. But my point being that like West Saville, they in North Lenhurst, similarly, they got a Bible. Yeah. This is how we play the game. Right. And it and it works. And, and they right. commit to the Bible, right? right. And, and it, like they get good doing it that way. Right. And it's like you look at like, all right, Michael ran this and now this guy runs this. So just a Yeah, but but even that, like like they I guarantee you that they're running on Mike. Mike Mara's yes, rack. They, yes. Right? The, He's I'm climbing a, a ladder that's similar. And like a lot of it's similar, but they well Billy's well, got to buy really, him on a foot. I think he has got I, a little I, change in this. I, I don't know. Just, I think they recognize who they are, what they are, what they can do, and they just they know how to race. And yeah. but, and, and they're back to the regular team. You got Ryan Yuganin came back this year. Yes. I mean, yeah. you had Joey, Joey and uh, Joey Cleanser, Danny Tanny doing the digging. So you, you have the regular team there. I tell you what, go go into that state tournament. They had some momentum. I mean, I, I I you know I, I thought it was going to come down to buckets between you guys and those guys. I, I would say West Sable sincerely was the scariest team. Yep. For yeah, the they run eventual the, champions, they yes. run all eight contests and run all eight of them well. Yep. I mean, they, they won the Hempstead Invite. They and they, they they won it convincingly with twenty one fifty in buckets at the end. And, and look at the bucket squad. I mean, they run they ran five twenty ones, a twenty two zero, and a twenty two five. I mean, that that sets. <laughs> How do you get better than that? Yeah, I mean, 565. And, and, and they also switched out the bottom man. Kyle Joukowsky takes over this year. But you still got Joey in the middle, Danny Tenney up top. I mean, that's the biggest thing about any of our sports or racing is, you know, consistency, keeping those people around for years and years and years. And uh, and there you go. I mean, but the guy's just getting it done. I, I really, I thought that was going to be, it was going to come down to buckets, you guys, those guys. Well, I mean, the last two years came down to buckets, and uh, West Sable came up a little short. I was uh, thinking they have no chance to redeem themselves. Didn't work out that way. And, uh, you know, going forward from here, the, the West Sable Flying Dutchmen are the threat, right? I yeah. mean, you know, Always. Central Islip has shown – one of the things I think that jumps out to me about this season, and we don't really talk about it enough, 
how many teams won tournaments this year, right? And as we jump into Central Islip here at the end of, of the run, if you go and you look at the 2024 schedule, um, CI wins Lindenhurst. Uh, North Belmore wins, uh, excuse me, West Ava wins North Belmore. Um, West Ava wins Selden, okay? Um, Islip wins the Joe Hunter. Joe. CI wins County. Suffolk County. Uh, you know, I, we're, obviously we're focused here on Long Island for a second here. Uh, West Hempstead wins the Nassau County. Uh, North Lindenhurst wins the CI Invite, right? Uh, West Sable wins the Hempstead Invite, okay? Um, CI doesn't win a tournament, even though it felt inevitable. They felt Thanos-esque, or, you know, early in the year in a West Sable kind of way, right? Um, and there's similarities we'll talk about in a second. Um, but they win the uh, Suffolk County drill. They don't win again until the state tournament. Right, and as much as um, we want to think that what Central Islip ended up doing with their thirty points with an asterisk again, uh, they they weren't top. It happens every ten years. They weren't number one. <laughs> they weren't number one in the Fab Fourteen. West Sale Flying Dutch with the number one in Fab Fourteen going in this year. So no I, we can jump it. in from there. Yeah, and so obviously as we move to CI, winning. Let's talk about winning the, the Central Chuck- Robos. Start the year off with a bang, 32 points at the uh, Lindenhurst invite. And like you and said, but you know, even, even when they didn't win, they got 24 points in second place. They yeah. got 22 in second, 25 to win the county. You know, they, they scored in the 20s. Off day at Hempstead, but I think they were just resting up that day, getting ready. I think uh, Kessler wasn't playing that day. He, uh, he had pulled something at the, uh, your invite. So he took some time off, put some extra players in there, and got ready for the uh, state where you won with 30 points. Three times this year, your top 30 points. That That's amazing right Yeah, there. I mean, that's what stands out to me the most is three times over 30 and a 25, a 24. I mean, only one time under 20, at the, again, at Hempstead, 13 and a half. And, again, not everybody played that day. I mean, that's, that's, a dominant that's season. scoring a lot of points. Um, and, you know, and you, so it, as much as you can say going forward, you, you know, Chris is saying West Sable. Well, look, let's look at this last line. I mean, going forward, it's, it's the same thing. Going forward, it, you know. Your ladder team centralized. I mean, when you're scoring that amount of points week in and week out. But here's a, here's a slash line now. So we'll, let's go with this then. You start the day off three man six twenty four. Your best B ladder is a four ninety two. C ladder an eight fifty seven, which doesn't count as a record because it was at the Joe. But who cares? It's an eight fifty seven. One of the best shots you'll ever see in racing. Like you said, probably the best shot ever. Well, we, we can talk, talk about we'll that. Talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. talk about pound for pound. Yeah, yeah. twelve forty six C hose. <laughs> 784 on the rerun and B host of the state drill. That that put things over the top. 887 efficiency, 593 pump, 2140 in buckets. I mean, that that's right up there. I mean, that that's those are the numbers you want on the back of your baseball card. Yeah, I mean those that's you know, those are just, just, like teams would die to have those as their team record. Kind of. No, he, he brought he runs two fours. What's the last time someone ran two fours in a season? Well, Mike, that wasn't a Mara. Or has yeah. anyone ever done that twice in a season? Maybe the Kip Spencer Ford. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I think tomorrow. Johnny Short. And, yeah. Um, I thought he did too. Yeah. But that'd be old four, I think. Yeah, I think Johnny definitely did. I don't think Billy did in the same season. It's 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 a tough no, thing. No, I, I doubt it. Yeah. Two four nines and then a five eleven five thirteen. I mean five fourteen. I tell you what, the magic man. You can't. Hats off to that kid. What a season. I, I mean, your, your brother coined that name, and I, I tell you, it, it it was magic. You know, he he comes down to motor pump at the state tournament. Uses his dad's nozzle, trips, <laughs> trips, getting ready to set up. Somehow he falls down the proper way and blasts a target. They run a 593 and win the state tournament. Uh, that was uh, just, uh, you know, brings tears to your eyes thinking about that. You know, uh, Richie Arnett, can't say enough about that kid. What a lovely, awesome human being, good kid. And then he comes out to help out Labor Day to do the truck with us. Yeah, yeah, he was, <laughs> he was basically changing garbages after that, so. Uh, um, I I love to me uh, if I'm if I'm bragging about CI for a second, it's their C ladder numbers. Okay. Oh wow. Every run this year, with the exception of the Ice of Town drill and the nine sixteen, was an eight. It doesn't count. I mean, it's phenomenal. That's a, a, that's that's, a that's the greatest that season ever of a contest. That I, I mean, and and I you know the hobos we once we scored forty out of forty in efficiency. That was always like our claim to fame for our old guys. You know, we scored. First place in every county drill. Um, we we would have scored first place in every drill and efficiency, but I missed a hydrant in one of them. Anyway, 
So it's always that guy. Yeah, <laughs> and not one of those defense scrapers. You know, <laughs> every one of those is a, is a solid, solid eight. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. My God, yeah. You know, it was eight sixty five, seventy five, fifty seven, seventy nine, eighty four, ninety three, seventy five, seventy three, and a nine sixteen at the town. The world's just saying we got forty, forty three men a couple of years ago. I remember that. You guys had a good year. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Tommy G let it be known. Um, I mean, nobody runs Tommy. the contest the way you guys do. Uh. Well, listen, there's a couple things going on. So Danny Danny Jackson is the best sea ladder driver. No question. Of all time. And I say that because I, I you know, I I don't I don't know that I would give him that crown for sea hose. He probably wouldn't either. But for Sea Ladder, uh his approach has shown that there's a a kamikaze-ness to it that pays dividends in landing somewhere between the yellow and the perfect. The hydrant don't move. Right. But for him, he's going for it and sliding and whatever we land, we land. And you see it in the transition time we talk about during the broadcast all the time. His his number from the cones to where the spikes go in the ground, like the dig time, as we call it, the transition time, is always lower than everybody else. Um, that's experience. Uh, you know, we're talking almost 30 years now of experience of, of him running that contest. Uh, and, you know... I can't be more proud of, of just those that contest specifically to me. Um, but that 857, we'll talk about it for a second. So um, 2011, we changed the rules, right? We go from a 350 cone time. I'm trying to get my mic to work better. There we go. Uh, we go from yeah, Steve, get your, get your big ass body out of the way. Yeah. We go from uh, we go from a 350 cone time to a 340 cone time. We change the tires from 17 to 15, right? Um, I believe, as a scientist, that we added about two tenths to the sure. difficulty of the contest. Obviously, a tenth going from forty to fifty, but the front tires also—they don't stop as well as the old front tires did. And you look at how people used to dig versus how they dig now; it's probably about another tenth. And so, if that's the case, you take two tenths off of that run right there, eight fifty-seven, and you're looking at an eight thirty-seven which the best run of all time before those rule changes with bigger tires and faster motors is West Sable in 2008 running an 846. I think it was 2008. And um, these guys right now, as oh, fans, as at, for everybody who, of us who are watching, these guys right now are running the best sea ladder in, Ever. in, Ever. in history. Well, I, And I think it's important to acknowledge that because as viewers, as, as consumers – you want to, you know, these guys are doing Barry Bonds stuff. Let's talk about them being Barry Bonds right now. Let's talk about Chris Connell being, uh, you know, Barry Bonds sure. of, of Behos Hydrant. You know, like, we yeah. want to point those things out. The consistency of the contest is is phenomenal. We, it's un, unheard of, unwatched. Like we haven't seen that kind of consistency for the, throughout the year, right? I understand the whole science of the thing. You still want that number? You, you do. still. Yeah, and that's this is very frustrating for me. Same as yeah, same with like seven thirty eight or, or buckets right. With buckets 19, to me, we're right. running with a barrel that's harder to race with than it was then, five years ago. Yeah. And so you want to compare apples to apples, but at the very oh. least, if you can't get apples to apples, make it easier. So somebody has said, <laughs> I, I, I've said this to guys I've had this conversation with. He's put himself in a conversation that there's only two or three people in the conversation already. As, as a climber and the numbers he's run. So he's in the conversation. Right? There's only one. I, I, I can't sit here and say to you that's the best sea ladder shot ever. I can't say that yet. Um, in fairness, sea ladder's harder because once we got into the cone era, that's when everything started to right. become a little bit more apples to apples. Right. Up to that point, we were all racing to, to scrape tents yeah. all the time, right? right? And so if you look back to 92, you know, uh, Cav running a, a nine ten, I think it was. And like, yeah, no, it's, yeah, that, that was four that day. And like, it was a monster shot. It is a monster shot to right. this day. So we're trying, my point is that we always, I think the one thing that is the same run to run is the men, is right. the members. And if we're going to try to figure out historically how to compare those shots from 30, from 40 years ago, sorry, <laughs> right. that, you know, it was 30 years ago. If we're going to try to compare those shots from 30 years ago as to how they compare to now, we have to come up with a way to compare them, right? You no, know, there, there is. And that's why I say he's in the conversation. He's in a very elite conversation and, a, and an, with an elite shot of 
there's only four or five of those shots that are in that conversation, or three shots, or two shots. You know what I'm saying? It's so. Yeah, but to yeah. do that shot, that, like what Chris is saying, though, I, I, to do that shot with, with the restrictions that are on right now, with the, with the smaller tires, the, uh, the the fact you can't break the cone, and, and, and the way that Danny drives this thing is unbelievable with a double break, and he doesn't even push the cone times. He's right at 1249, uh, at 349, 350. So he, he's not at 341. He's not giving him cheating any there. But the fact that he, he does all this yeah, and you're still within I, a tenth of the all-time record I don't when they ran with no restrictions there's no is amazing. There's no slight to it. It's it's ridiculous. And when you think about our sport, it's ridiculous how good it is. Oh, I know. But just, just the fact that does. Well, so, so, so Danny Jackson a couple years it's ago. Important, it's important for us to acknowledge when we're seeing it. It's, oh, you're, it's, right? It's, and, and it could go away tomorrow. There's, it's, it's, you know, so like it, celebrate it while it's here for a minute. Oh, know? absolutely. And it, it's one of those shots. I mean, I, I was there. I saw it live. It's one of those shots that you sit there and say, wow, I, what did I just witness? It's one of the best sea ladder shots, if, you know, top three sea ladder Amazing. shots I've ever seen in my life in person. And it, so. We haven't seen that shot in 10 you know, years, 15 years. You know, it could it, be it. But it's like, it could be the one. So, but right. Like I always said, like you're a pump shot in Riverhead. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. But, <laughs> but ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. His bucket shot was better. You know. Not Riverhead. So, yeah, well, he, 1772. You know, <laughs> I look, so what was what was the number in the truck that day in Riverhead? At uh, uh, 537. 36, 37. 537. Yeah. So, really, he's the best shot in the, in the we truck. We ran it. Right. We couldn't truck. get a water test, but we ran it. It happened. Uh, so you know? It was a heartbreaker. Yeah. So right. Best, best shot in the truck all time. And hey, I, I still say to this day, that's the best motor pump shot I've ever seen. Now, didn't count, right? But right. it's still the best motor pump shot. I've well, ever seen. and and it, there's a bigger question too, and we we want people to kind of weigh in on this. Is is do Joe Hunter runs? Uh, and just granted, just don't forget we had no radio that day. Anyway. Okay. We didn't have radio. No, five thirty seven. There was, uh, I think there was in that. Oh, it was in Nashville. Yeah, we weren't even taking. It didn't exist at all. <laughs> not, not even nothing. Not even no. There's we no, no recording. That's <laughs> uh, the worst. Paige, how are the hobo wings? They're good. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, a quick question for you, uh, Danny. So, uh, so Danny Jackson, he, he tried the uh, double break thing about four years ago, let's say, right? Four or five years ago, he started getting to it. And then you guys went back to trying to straight dig shortly thereafter. And then you, then he mastered it. And now you're back to what you are right now. The, with, the, with the breaking? Yeah, it? with the breaking. Because I, I know you went, you went back to trying the regular dig compared to the, 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 the short break thing. And you just, but uh, after he went back and fooled around with it, the second version of this. It's unbelievable. I, I, I think that Danny loves to run the contest with a good, long, hard break. And so I think in his mind, the way that he does that is he gets to the cones-ish. He, he, takes a he takes off enough, and then he gets out of it because he actually wants to coast to his mark. And that's the difference and distinction there. And I don't, I don't, he would tell anybody who asked. Exactly so this. Is he takes off, a, 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 you know, shaves a little bit because he's going too fast. Then he lets it ride for 50, which means he's winning the race up to that point, right? Because right, right. everybody else is hitting brakes. He's not, right? And then he's going in for a big, hard break. And if you look, all four tires are locked. There's a lot of teams at this point who don't run with a locked four tires. And I think that that is the difference in his ability to beat everybody to the patch is it's an aggressive kamikaze slide with all four tires. Now, traditionally, instinctively, a lot of people don't like doing that because we used to have 17s in the back, 17s in the front. The 17s would stop so well that the, we'd do the old ass, right? We, we'd swing around one way or the other in the lock. And with the 15s in the front, you could have all four locked. They're not, you're not going to swing anymore. So you could do a big, heavy, almost B truck break. Because he's turning C ladder into B ladder. That's what he's it really is. And now the, now the di di difference is, though, is that when it comes to sea truck, you're in that break for so much longer. Sometimes the track stops better. Sometimes it stops worse. And I think for him, his goal has always been to land somewhere in the middle between the, the yellow and the, and the perfect. And if it stops really well, the spikes are right over yeah. the yellow. If it stops no good, he'll dump them a little bit past the perfect, right? But, like, that's the point. It does not translate to hoses as well. Right, because now the the hydro don't move; it's always in the same spot. Right, yeah, well, you don't have that leeway of a right, team. right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, All so right, it's sure. just, I mean, we you know we got about fifteen minutes to go here. Well, I'll start with you, I got Chris. A couple honorable mentions here. Just anything else sticking to your mind, like a certain player this year, a certain team this year, something that 
jumped out at you that you saw, that, you know, that comes to mind? Or, or you know, obviously it could be more than one, but just anything that's coming to your mind right away. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I love the Oyster Bay Teddies boys. I thought they were um, they were going to hurt. Um, they've, they're obviously resetting in a bunch of contests, but they got talent. They've got ability. They've got passion for the sport, and they got a little bit of flair, they right? Got they're the, they kind got of showmen. The, and they have the and I, you know me, I love that part, you know? So, like, I'm all in. I'm, I'm an Oyster Bay Teddies Boys fan. I'm excited to see where they go from here. I was a little worried about the program coming into this year, and it's clear to me that, like, the boys aren't going anywhere, and we're going to have a lot of fun with those guys. So, to me, those, those are one of the teams that I, I think of that I'm excited to see what's going to come next. Oyster Bay has the Wet Bandits having a great season this year. I mean, I tell you, these guys embraced it, so they, they made their whole motif on the uh, with the Home Alone with the uh, the Wet Bandits. They would leave the uh, faucets right, on. Yeah. They're the Wet Bandits because they're stealing water out of the hydrant. You watch these two guys go in there, and it's, uh, you know, Dender and, uh, and Andy Galgano. They, they go in there, and they, 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 they push water every time. It's, it's almost the same show that uh, we were getting from uh, Lindenhurst with uh, a lot of good Instagram with feeds Brody. from it. So they uh, anyway. So uh, they they run a they run a five ninety four at your invite. It, they get three points out there. Five ninety seven at Point Pleasant. They have you know so back to back. They have two fives this year for these guys. Great looking show for these guys, and uh, that's always to pay for you right there. And uh, one more uh, good shout out here. Another team did place in the state trail, but uh, Westbury uh, Turtles uh, merged with the Termites. Had a really good season over in Nassau County. Came in second in the uh, county trail out there. They won the. Uh, Nassau County total points in Seahose. And I, I got to tell you, one guy really stands out over there for me, I think, is Matt Rath. I thought he did a fantastic job. Took and a lot of steps this year, yes. Throws the ladder, and uh, you know, he, he came in as the backup hydrant man and uh, really asserted himself. And it, it showed down the stretch. He throws up a, a 1245, 1275, just misses a seven to Hempstead when they blow off. But uh, really nice job by Matt Rath and the Westbury Turtles getting it done, so they they finish in the top five in total points in uh, yeah fourth Nassau place County. yeah fourth place total points in uh, in Nassau County this year and uh, and and Joe Joe Bird Joe Reardon Joe Bird right uh, yeah, Joe Bird yeah uh, I'm I'm just a fan he's he's such a passionate climber oh boy right and like obviously it's not in, it runs in the family <laughs> yeah 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 but not not uh, maybe not like like an instant climber right he's probably a hoses guy, right? He's built like a hoses guy, kind of. But, like, you can just tell the way he climbs. It's just all out. And all of a sudden, like, these little glimmers. And you're like, wait, is this, is this hoses guy going to be a ladder guy? You know? And I think that another year, there might be something really big there, you know? And, and obviously, he loves the game. So that's what's exciting for me when I watch him run is, like, if he could take one more step here, you know, I – I, I always think, like, even when there's, like, that slam and he's just, like, it's he's still arms and legs in it. You know well, what I'm saying? Like, he's, nice. he's just yeah. scrambling, trying, like, like Wiley Coyote to get up to the top of this thing. Yeah, he, and, works, he works so hard. And I, I got to say a big shout-out to New White Park as well over there. Uh, Mike Athena is over there. Uh, John Catone on the nozzle doing a good job. But, I mean, Mike Athena just think about that. He's six, 69 years old and still dry. I mean, let me tell you. I tell you what. If, 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 I, put you, if I put your team on the back <laughs> of that truck. I, I'd like to see the numbers you guys would put up with with a, with a no no, no. Hey, listen, team. I, it would be a lot of fun to watch. I, let me tell you this: I, I love Mike Athenas. I'm a huge fan. The, you ever had one of his trucks? I mean, I mean, no, I, I had the old days. You guys, yeah, 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 just swap out, around. just take a shot. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I never did. I always wanted to, but I mean, he's. Such, I was scared. <laughs> he's like, well, I, I guess, yeah. But he is. He'd be a first round draft pick if you're having a, a racing draft, right? Like the guy's just. He's always on. And and brings in so much knowledge too. But like, if you would have told me that this Westbury New Hyde Park thing was going to work out, like, there's no way that the personalities involved on both sides, <laughs> there is no chance that this is going to happen. And it has. It's been so much fun. And and really, as much as, you know, respectfully to the to the senior leadership on both sides, it's been the guys. It's been the kids. Who oh, yeah. turns out they're just a good time. And sure. they kind of hit it off with each other. Right. And, like, it is it is the definition of what we always wanted the, the merger to be. Because I don't think Westbury or New Hyde Park considers this to be the final destination. Right? Nah, but, uh, you know. You know, if it's going, hey, listen, if it's going great, maybe it is. But at some point, I think everybody's, like, position of comfort is to be your own team. And if New Hyde Park showed up with 20 guys 
inevitably they're going to go maybe, maybe play yeah. their own game. And like that, but in the meantime, right now, it is fun to watch because it's a great group of guys who are a lot of laughs and who are very clearly putting in the work. You know, and I'm excited to see what the next step is. Yeah, and you always get a couple of good T-shirts out of out of Devin Robinson. Uh, you know, already, already knows this guy very well. I mean, he's the uh, what's he, yes man uh, outfitter. So if you're an Islander fan, get in touch with Devin. I'm sure he has something new on the in the pipeline. <laughs> Just a, an, a baseball update: the Yanks are down three two. Good. And it what? looks like the Crimson Tide are upset by the Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt oh way. my gosh! Really? Wow. Like major awesome. upset. How did that college. happen? That's awesome. Major upset. Yo, they're fantastic. Football. They got the ultimate thing. It was like they, they've beaten them 37 times in a row. It's, it's the <laughs> second time. Yeah. They we talked about it on the pregame on the uh, yo, game day today. Coming off the Georgia win. Wait, where's, wow. Paul today? Wait, where's Paul today? Paul was uh, up in Rhode Island with some people. And I think Rhode he's Island. Make, making his way home now. Or oh, home. man. We're missing you, Paul. <laughs> I'll, uh, with 10 minutes left, yeah, I mean, you mentioned before a couple other teams that jumped out. I'll give you a couple more shout-outs. Uh, to me, Farmingville, proud of those guys, proud of uh, coming into this season. Obviously, there was fear, like, maybe the program was done, right? And a uh, yeah, passionate so group of guys who've made their push back. It's been great to watch Steve kind of take the leadership role on that team now. Um, and the stewards are still in, in, in the game. And Farmingville ain't going anywhere, and that was really great. Farmville, uh, I, I tell you, for Nassau, we, we saw Port, Man, uh, Port Washington and Manhasset. They got out there. They scored a bunch of points this year, did a nice job. You can see Mike Ward out there. They, they picked up 15 uh, and a half uh, what, county what points. Was, what uh, Point Pleasant was the record of the age of that? Uh, was it Seaho? I think they had 295 <laughs> years on the back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you had two diggers in their 50s. It, it was uh, it Danny Salerno, I think Mike's, Mike's in his 70s. He's throwing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Danny's driving. Yeah, uh, and they had a lot of fun up there in Point Pleasant. They, and, and they ran a, uh, a solid eight twenty five, got a point nine ninety five in C ladder, which wasn't bad. Good, good job by uh, Mr. Mustakis Alex, doing a nice job climbing up there, and uh, good stuff. You know, good to keep it running, keep it working. Uh, uh, it was great to see Riverhead back out this year. Riverhead came out. Uh, West Islip as well, running, today. running all eight and putting in uh, the work. Um, and scraping some points, West Islip. They, they in a few contests were able to to put up some decent runs, and with a brand new, brand new driver, and uh, and and uh, very exciting to see what happens. Speaking of West Islip, let's take a minute to give a shout out to our buddy Uncle Kevy, uh, Kevin Hayes, who we saw him. Uh, an update? Uh, where he's doing great. He was at the uh, oh, Suffolk County meeting. Uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, he was his usual boisterous self, um, and he had a little health scare, and we, he got us real worried, but he's doing good. So uh, good all signs are, are good for Kevin Hayes, um, the, the loudest man uh, in show business. Thank um, God. It, it takes away from me. Thank God. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go a quick shout-out to a couple teams from Nassau County. we got uh, North Merrick. Uh, Thanks a lot for practicing with us this year. And they uh, scored five and a half points in the state tournament. Uh, Alex, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, gosh, sorry. They yeah. did not score five and a half points county in the state tournament. tournament. The county, county, county tournament. tournament. Yeah. County there you tournament. go. Yeah, that's a county tournament. That's what I said. Not the state yeah. tournament. He's, he's trying, tournament. folks. He's trying. Now, AJ took over the driving this year for Paul. Uh, Paul Wilders. He's not doing it anymore. So, good job for them. They're uh, working their way forward. And, uh I tell and you, this what, is his first year driving, right? Yeah, yeah. fun to practice with those guys. And, they, they, and he, they, he ran for a while, but now he's going to do the seat, and that's great. You know, Paul's a really, good driver, but, uh, you know, this is this is a, a new phase, you know? It's a new phase, and they got some young kids over there. I tell you, a lot of fun, and they're professional. They're, they're trying hard, and they're, 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 they're not quitting. They're not going anywhere. Uh, uh, Belmore Ball Breakers, uh, big shout-out to uh, Jay Podowski. He's going he's gonna to hang it up, I guess, after 30-some-odd uh, years of racing. Yeah, that's that's the story, at least on the street. But impressive job too by Belmore, what they've done in bringing together um, the whole battalion, basically, and of a couple of guys from each department who wanted to play. Um, you know, yeah, you racing underneath the Belmore car. flag, yeah. but also, uh, but but you can see the hunger there. You can see it's a group of guys who want to who want to make something happen. And uh, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. This transition to a new guy, a new driver, might be difficult, but we'll see what happens. So. Yeah, he still came out and played this year a little bit. They, they scored a point or two in the county. Uh, Doug Chiz over there and all the guys. Uh, uh, Car Place Frogs had a nice day at the state tournament. Uh, Mike McCann over there with uh, our, our, I tell you, how great are those Skeletor pictures? Him leaning on the hydrant. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> every, show every time I see a picture of him like that, I want to play the theme song to Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yes, yes. Bum, 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 <laughs> oh, like he's just so he's like perfect. leaning, like yeah. And uh, Mike Gattish over there as well. Uh, and hey, before we uh, wrap this up, look, let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, the juniors this year. We had a we had a really good junior competition this wow. year. They sure had a, a a great season going. They they they, they won what the, the first two or three drills. And uh, we have them there. Yeah, uh, I slip actually won their first junior drill in a long time. They got rained out in the latter event, but the. Uh, the Wolves with some, uh, I heard they had some Nassau Motors uh, on their team from yeah. the Cloudman boys uh, helping them out. Uh, yeah, I slipped one at the West uh, West Sable Invita yeah. Junior Invitational, which again, uh, yeah, I think there was some yeah. rain out yeah, contest Yeah, they, they missed there. a couple events. And then, uh, so so going into the state tournament, Bayshore, the odds on favorite, no doubt about it. Had won three in a row going in. And they, they were looking good. And uh, so I tell you, what, what what a day that was. They, they start out early, a uh, couple teams miss. And I, I think Lindenhurst running number one. They uh they just kept putting points up all day long. They were the, the number one team. Like I said, it's tough to run number one in the state drill. And these kids, you know, they they to- coached by Dennis Brody and uh and Ty Callahan. They just kept putting shots up all day and say, "Come get me, come get me." And so uh, we get into the first hose contest. Bayshore Juniors. They 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 break the record in the uh, B hose uh the running hose contest for the uh, the junior running hose junior card hose yeah and on the uh on the water test like, this is getting the sea ice track this is this is two state tournaments influenced immediately by uh by water test at the track and uh oh, well. <laughs> has, no, had nothing hold do, on has nothing to do with, the pump. Do with the pump at that i one, know right? i know i know i'll so, take i'll take anyway, so, for the motorized right thing. so so, so Not base for this uh, one base was a hose fails so they uh they have to surrender the hose for the rest of the day so now they had to switch their hoses up and, and they were fantastic and hoses all you know they just set the record two two weeks earlier so this 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 tournament goes into flux because all of a sudden Bayshore can't find it, and Lindenhurst just keeps plodding along, plodding along, plodding along, throwing points up, and it comes down to the end of the year, and all of a sudden there's just not enough time. Yeah. And the snails the snails pull it out. I mean this this goes back to the '82 screw with your brother and uh and you guys got him in efficiency back in the day when the the hose leaked a little bit and. I tell you what, <laughs> what are you I'm, talking about? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a junior story. state drill at uh, Ace of Terrace. <laughs> 1982, they. Uh, they pulled a fast one on the snails back then. It was and this it, year. I, I was going to see something doing the broadcast, but I didn't want to jinx them. <laughs> I love it. You, you, you made fun of me for a jinx. Oh, no, you go. Yeah, I will. I will. But um, um, their first win since 1985. 1985, and, and Pi Callahan wasn't even on the team. He was suspended. But uh, <laughs> I think this I is his first. <laughs> it, it was their first tournament win. No, 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 no. first state tournament. First state tournament. Win. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, right. They, they've had a good team the last couple of years and uh, graduated some kids to the uh, juniors, but uh, the senior team, but. But hey, congratulations! Uh, big Let me, shout like, out you know, when we go into that, sales. I was there that day. We go into that efficiency contest. Efficiency is the last contest for those of you who don't know at home, and uh, it's great to watch because it's like it's also like this graduation moment. Efficiency is the first contest of our sport, right? Well, going all the way back to eighteen seventy something. What? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, baby. Love you, man. Billy Edson. Billy Edson. Edson. Take your red flag. And go home. Yeah. Stop throwing <laughs> people out of the Just set the clocks, right? That's all right. Oh, we have a speaker here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they can hear us. <laughs> they can hear us. <laughs> oh, no, so, don't tell me. <laughs> but they come down and they hit that target. Uh, the Lindenhurst Junior Snails hit that target, man. Good shot. It was wild. They, they, I'm, I, it's so rare to see a target hit like that. He destroyed it. It was like no doubter. This thing's over, you know. Yeah, and it wasn't, wasn't the best shot. But the thing is, is Lindenhurst is, is missing the efficiency. Two years in a row in the state with, with a chance to win. And when that kid hit it, you knew there was enough points on the board. There weren't enough tweeners in there. Right. It was an automatic. They, they we're just, done here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just I love that. A little help yeah, 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 it was yeah. just it was a matter of time. You know, I was uh, just watching those kids on the side of the, uh, you know, over there on, on the left side by the by the pump house. And they they went they went nuts when they knew it was official. It was what a what a great day. I, I felt so. We're not taking away from the Bayshore Junior Redskins who have the program all. of programs. But great season. When you win all the well. time, you become the villain. Right? Hey, what's the old Batman phrase? Sometimes uh, you either die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. Right. Mm-hmm. And and uh, in many ways, the Bayshore Junior Redskins, due to their success, are the villain of junior competition. I know for me, growing up, my life is shaped and formed by losing to the Bayshore Junior Redskins. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I'm probably sitting here because you guys are so good at what you do. So respect for what you guys do. And... Uh, we're happy to see see a team steal one from you guys once in a while because otherwise, uh, you guys are the best in the game. So, 
Um, that's it, guys. That brings us to eight o'clock. Uh, hope you had a good time. Yep. Any uh, any any words to add on our way out? No, just appreciate it. Had a lot of fun. Joy sitting with you guys today, and uh, we look forward to next year. Yeah, it's gonna be a great off season. I wish we could do this at the uh, at the red carpet in a couple weeks at the uh, state dinner we have coming up on the twenty uh, fifth, right at the under the Hilton. We're a big fat maybe we'll see. Yeah, well, well maybe, maybe we'll sneak one in there. It'd be a lot of fun because it's a good, nice little spot in there. We could sneak a sneak an hour in. It would be fun. Yeah, kind of fun. we'll see. We'll see. What's well, up anyway, in the air, so folks? Uh, if something hits the schedule, you know we're going to do a, a little show from the yeah, so New York State uh, dinner. Keep your ears out. Uh, state dinner's coming up in a couple weeks. And uh, hey, if you don't have your uh, room, it's too late to get the uh, discount. The discount, is it? I don't know. I, 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 you probably call and try and ask, but it was, it was a fantastic. Good job by Scott Rice and the uh, dinner committee setting that up for us because I, I got in, I mean, 150 bucks for a $300 room. I mean, you can't beat that. No, that's pretty good. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so that's going to be a couple weeks. We have the uh, <laughs> NASA dinner on Thanks, the night. Thanks, Billy. Now I got to go get a room. Paige is like, what's the room? Well, I didn't get one. He's splitting his with pies. It's, it's a front day. <laughs> <laughs> I still paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the inside uh, spoon on that one? <laughs> <laughs> I got pictures. Here. Oh, God, I don't want to see him. <laughs> I'll, I'll give that one to the media committee if we do a show. <laughs> you, haven't been, you, haven't, you, haven't, you haven't been to Manfest. Uh, no. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, anyway, thanks a lot, everybody, this year. It's been a lot, a lot of fun. Appreciate all the racers out there, uh, all, all you officials. Thank you, Suffolk County. Thank you, Nassau County, Upstate. Western, Northern, the guys will still still get it done on the track because, you know, we can't do it without you. And uh, we really, really appreciate that. So we have the uh, next next time we'll be doing this, maybe we'll do a little pregame show sometime. We'll be back for a preseason show yeah. hosted by uh, the, the Billy Cornell preseason fun time show hosted by Billy Cornell. Uh, we'll go. have a little more fun next time. There was, yeah. was too much to put into this. Oh, man, fun. we were That's actually doing our tonight. job. Yeah. And as always, yeah. thanks to Fatties for uh, hosting us. Yeah, hey, Amen. Eric Flynn over here, all the guys. Uh, Jake behind the uh, behind the stick over here, getting it done. Nice. Like it. But, all right. Uh, good all right. stuff. So uh, we'll wrap it up. Hopefully we uh, see you at the state dinner, but if not, stay classy, New York, and we'll see you. 2025.